What is going on, everybody? It is episode 564 of Pop Culture Crisis. My name is Brett, and I'm here once again with my co-host. Would you introduce yourself, please? Hi, Crisis Actors. It's Mary. It's a nice sunny day. The sun is finally shining, and the flowers are up, and it looks so nice after several days of just dreary clouds, overcast. It was overcast when and I got it in this really, morning. And it really made me think of Shane every time I saw the sky <laughs> like this because the clouds did not used to look like this. Yeah. I'm so proud of you. <laughs> they really didn't look like this before. Someone sent me books that's like cloud propaganda from the 90s. It's like <laughs> if you could find the faces in the clouds, but they're old school vintage clouds, you know? So okay. it was like so big cl cloud working their way into your mind to mock the vintage clouds. Well, we're vintage cloud stands here. Yes. Which Wait, is why we've asked yes. you all in the poll today, are clouds real? <laughs> you don't have a third option, it's yes or no. That's right. When exactly did big cloud get a hold on the industry? Dude, when did the chemtrails start ruining everything? See, it's, but it's not just the chemtrails. This is the thing I want people to understand. There's a hierarchy of fake clouds out there. There's vintage clouds that have been poisoned by forever chemicals in the water supply, and those have been evaporated so like up 90s, into the vintage clouds. Like, I think it predates the 90s because I would look at the atom bomb as a big star. But, and the, but atom, the, 90, the 90s was like what was the stuff in the in the fertilizer chemicals? The 90s, yeah, like that's that? like the Brockovich clouds. Okay, you know, like that's the chemicals that she was finding out that it get evaporated into the clouds. What was the? There was an X Files episode where they talk about yeah. like the the green chemicals that are in the, Ooh, I don't know that the one. grass. I have to watch that for my like for my research. Yeah. Uh, but I think like atom bombs okay. were like a big start to the things we put in the air okay. you can look at fukushima and stuff like that so yeah okay does it have to do with the uh, estrogen that's in the water no <laughs> sorry the progestin that's yeah. in the water it might be just, i i think they're just poisoning it's everything making the frogs gay yeah well, well the, the clouds the, are making the frogs gay for sure the two humpback whales that just got caught doing gay stuff they were caught yeah it was an only fan they were trying only to fans for whales they were trying to be in discreet and in some cases, why do they have to them? be humpback whales? Yeah, right, <laughs> right, right. Uh, I saw people in the comments fighting, saying like they're not gay whales. They're actually that's a, sh a sign of aggression. Uh, oh, well. so but those are whale enthusiasts. The other people saying it was okay. whale porn. I don't know. This is weird. Last time you were on, I was crying profusely out of my. <laughs> I had this left effect on eye. Mary. And my left eye is just crying right now. I don't. It's been Oof. going like this for hours. Weird. I have no idea okay, what's so going on. Okay, so predates my arrival. Yes. Everyone out there, <laughs> it, was, it, was it knew it. Was, it knew that you were coming. My left eye knew. I'm so sorry. Well, I have that effect on people. I make yeah. people cry quite often. <laughs> I think you're crying because you're you're coming to terms with the clouds with being the clouds, fake. Yes. Yeah, it'll be okay. It's something in the air. It's we're looking, irritating me. Look, we're looking to abolish fake clouds, people. This is what this is what matters in 2024. It's not politics. It's fake clouds. Now I'm gonna think. Unironically, like yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, you're just talking about how boring politics is these days. It's cyclical. BS. Yep. You know, there's bigger problems out there, and also way more. Th you can have fun. There's also yeah. little, like smaller problems too. Small. Yeah, you can handle in your own life. Like yeah. you know, like yeah. that, that's that's my yeah. that's my thing. It's like yeah. when, uh, when I was talking to you before the show about like. Um, Skating on the weekends yeah. and not being able to get enough exercise so that when I walk upstairs, my my knee is is bothering me. Whereas if I skate more, then my knee doesn't bother me. That's right. a problem I can actually you know work on. You've identified a local problem it, that you can then work out. It doesn't have to be the border. It doesn't have to be immigration. <laughs> it doesn't right. have to be fentanyl. Right. It doesn't have to be any of these issues yeah. that they're not going to address in any of these things that are going on right now. Uh, you can work on things in your own corner, and you tend to be happier when yep. you do that. I totally agree. Yeah. I'm trying to see like what in my life am I per 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 uh, per procrastinating. I can't even talk. I just had a, a brain tumor uh, emerge procrastinating on as I'm trying to fight fake clouds. Like what am I not doing at home? You that know? was uh, that word. <laughs> I, I was having a conversation the other night and that word just I couldn't. What, I couldn't procrastinate? Pull, yeah, I couldn't pull it out. It was just one of those nights where it's just like I couldn't think of it. And I'm like, bro, <laughs> like and then finally, like so it was procrastination. I'm like. The fact that they said it before me just, I wanted to just go home. Yeah, that happened to me the other day with the word nominee, too. And I was like, the second I saw it, I'm like, oh my goodness, it's we were, nominee. We were talking about something to do with like a police raid. And I, was, I couldn't think of exigent uh, for exigent circumstances. So there would be I don't even know what that means. So it's uh, like um, if, you, um, if you chase a criminal into a building, right? Uh, you have a right to be in that building because you're, ch you're chasing a fleeing suspect. You can collect evidence inside that building even if it has nothing to do with the crime that you're pursuing in the moment, right? But the point is, is like the words, feel, it's like unique enough that it should come to you. But that's a easily. crazy thing though, that that's a possibility and, that we yeah, have. I know, but I know. yeah, well, I mean, it is a crazy word like, as well. Like uh, civil asset forfeiture, all that stuff. We could go on a yep. whole yeah. uh, shebang about and that. And out but, comes Judge Judy, exactly. today's guest. 
But the the thing is, is like when you're doing the show, like there are times where like I, I can talk fairly well in my private mm. life. I, I'm not completely illiterate or stupid. But when we're doing the show, I'm just like, uh, yeah. 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 And I'm like, I can't believe this is my job. <laughs> <laughs> well, a lot of people like in the traditional media space get to mess up all the time yeah. and then edit everything out so they're perfect like cookie cutter versions <laughs> yeah we i like the i like all the warts in a conversation you know that that to me is fun to the be messing fair up. like i've tried to record like like i i've done individual videos i did a couple over the holidays and i hate it like i'd, yeah. much, I'd much rather be out on the island live than For sure. have to record the video because then the set the second you mess up you're like oh what if i miss that edit when i'm going through to edit this later and i just yep. start having a mi mini panic attack i tell everybody like my who want, who's wants to start like a show or like a podcast like don't edit just go live well i mean like if you do it if you're good with it like you know some especially if you have high production value yeah. you're cutting to a lot of visual assets and stuff it's different perhaps to that level yeah. Guys, we got a bunch of stuff to get into today. It's going to be a lot of fun. But before we do, would you hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel, please? If you have not done so already, remember to share these videos with your friends so that more people can come in here, hang out, and watch this show live because it's not pre recorded, it's live. Mm -hmm. Also, remember all super chats, $20 and over. We will interrupt the discussion. We will read those super chats right then and there, and then we will do our best to get back on topic. Perhaps you have questions for Shane about clouds. It could be something you want to ask him about. But we got a bunch of stuff to get into today. So J.K. Rowling. See, I tried to say it the way they always tell me how to say it. I say Rowling. Other people say Rowling. Yeah, I never know. It's like niche in niche, which I just watched like 10 videos last night. Reese's about Reese's and Reese's. Yeah, we were okay, talking it's, about. It's Rowling. I don't yeah. care. It's so, Rowling. So uh, J.K. Rowling, is. Um, <laughs> she had the cops called on her by a journalist. The coppers <laughs> in the UK. <laughs> yes. Uh, they're out to get her because she misgendered a trans journalist which just goes to show that as crappy as the free speech seems to be doing here sometimes it's way worse over there mm -hmm. so we're gonna get into that we're also gonna talk about a new Anne Hathaway movie coming out and uh, cougars are on the rise in Hollywood <laughs> that's, right. that's not new but I, I maybe it's gonna be a, a new there's trend an agenda yeah. you think yeah. so yeah the okay. return of the crew of the cougars yeah yeah so uh, we're gonna talk about that. Also, we gotta get into this quote from Seth Rogen. It's actually an old quote, but this has been making the rounds again because he seems to be promoting a child-free lifestyle. And of course, many yes. conservatives are wagging their fingers <laughs> at this. So we'll get into it. It's gonna be a lot of fun. I'm sure there'll be a lot of uh, different opinions on this discussion. So uh, if you guys are ready, we will just go ahead and get right into it since we're not pre <laughs> since we're not pre-recorded and we can't cut to anything. You ready to get into it? Yeah, I have to be. <laughs> Let's go. You good? I'm ready. Let's go ahead and get started then. Okay, first things first. If you remember, we I don't think we actually talked about the Doritos controversy at first. No. When this person I, was announced. I was waiting for all of this to pan out. So it looks like the Doritos corporate division in Spain hired a new brand ambassador who is this trans activist named Samantha Hudson. And they fired this person just days after it was announced because... Those old tweets, they will come back to get you. And, <laughs> and people gone. people went back and they resurfaced some pretty disgusting old tweets from this person who is an avowed Marxist, by the way, and has spoken about destroying the monogamous nuclear family before. Yep. So here are some tweets from, I think, back in 2013 that were in Spanish and then translated to English. Samantha Hudson tweeted, I want to do thuggish things to a 12 year old's beep uh, expletive in the middle of the street in Mallorca in panties screaming that I'm a nymphomaniac in front of a super beautiful eight year old girl. That's another post. And a third one. I hate women who are victims of SA and go to self help centers to overcome their trauma. Annoying sluts. Wow. That one actually made me laugh in like. <laughs> Just because it's so it's so strongly worded, like it just made me laugh Annoying initially. Yeah. But obviously, this is not the type of person who is corporate friendly. Uh, but they didn't really care about that when they initially hired them because they were like, "How can we find someone who's even worse than Dylan Mulvaney? How do we pull it a Bud Light 2.0?" Yeah. And they were boycotted before they even had the chance. <laughs> the uh, the interesting thing is, is like as the internet. Uh, as the existence of the internet grows, it's been around for longer and longer. Your job is the person, whoever you are, to like um, do background checks on the people they're hiring to mm -hmm. do your due diligence. It's going to get more and more difficult because these tweets were from what 2013. You're going to have yeah. to. I guess the great thing about 2016 is you won't even have to look for tweets post 2016. You just go to everything <laughs> before Trump was elected to look for the actual spicy stuff. Right, right. <laughs> I uh, I think first of all we should just reject 
Doritos because they might taste good, but they're bad. They're bad for you. Yes. Uh, second of oils. all, yes, I think <laughs> it's it's a shame because they are delicious. Second of all, I really I really start to think that these corporations are doing this on purpose. I think they know they're going to step on a landmine with these people, and that they see a business mm -hmm. model of like we will get canceled as a corporation, just like a lot of people in like the entertainment world saw canceling as like a step up a new ladder, you know, because they have come back and they're uncanceled now or they're uncancelable. I think corporations are doing this. I think they probably knew she was a problem or he or whatever this so is. They're going to get like going to have a new flavor called uncanceled Doritos. Watch. That you're gonna have to get watch. This is part of like these, I think, and I could be crazy, but like long extended ad campaigns that were like, see, we lost we lost people, but we know in the long run we'll bring more people back when we do this like apology tour with, you know, it'll be like Clydesdales with, with, with for Bud Lizer, but Well, no, Bud that Lizer. next they're going to get Kid Rock as their exactly. Doritos brand ab exactly. ambassador to get the right wingers back. Or even Joe board. Rogan, you know, like something like that. Or Joe like Rogan. That. You know, because Shane Gillis went to Bud Light. Shane Gillis, Matt yeah. Reif. And this is also going to be the way they're going to destroy the indie space by the corporations merging with the indie. Ah. So maybe that's a larger conspiracy there, but I, I do think that these well, people want to be uh, canceled so they can come back even stronger. Who would we go to for a conspiracy other than you? Yeah, I don't know. Makes I, yeah, sense. I, I am the resident uh, conspiracy theorist here. I wish they would just bring back the uh, Cooler Ranch Doritos Locos Tacos. That's what I want them to do. <laughs> oh no, does this mean you have to boycott Taco Bell because they are partnered with Doritos? I'm not pro boycott I'm not prepared anyways. for I don't, that. I don't Emotionally, boycott. like I'm not prepared to boycott Taco Bell. Taco Bell. It's not like going to happen. Mary, no. Mary lives in fear of the day that Dylan Mulvaney comes out with the Doritos logo. <laughs> no. <laughs> would, you have to, would you have to? I would have to convert there? to the Sheets tacos. <laughs> that's my <laughs> ultimate nightmare. Uh, Shane, if Shane is in the chat, I saw that um, Sheets responded to oh, your meme, uh, to your Fatsavik meme. I'm waiting for that Sheets sponsorship yep. now. Yep. I'm, I'm looking I to I would get love to... to be sponsored by Sheets. Yes. I'm They're saying great. that to you, Sheets. We need your sponsorship. Okay we love you. Taco sponsorship from Sheets. Oh, that's a very specific, <laughs> yeah, a niche. That's a niche. I mean, I would, yes, it is. I'd prefer, I mean, I'd prefer the whole menu, but you know, it's, if it has to be one We'll I start do. with tacos. You move your way up to like pumpkin I, coffees I or whatever. I like the subs there too. Wow. <laughs> yeah, I do. I've had the chicken fingers. They're delicious. Yes. Oh yeah, yeah. The chicken strips yeah. are really, really this good. This episode is brought to you by Sheets. Yes. Thank you for listening. Basically. <laughs> Um, I also love that the advertising at Cheats is just kind of out of pocket. They no, it's like you're such a loser and a freak <laughs> that you like our food, don't you? Yeah, <laughs> like yeah. they're yeah, actually Brett, putting you down. Yeah, Brett likes gas stations that are also like DOMS. You know, yeah, like we're gonna, we're gonna like, <laughs> dominatrix gas put station put me shame. Down. Like, yeah. I, like I'm gonna eat your food, but I want to be shamed while I'm eating. Thank no, they are. Brett. They are yeah. shaming us. Yeah. They really are. Yeah, I like it too. It's they're awesome. like, you know, you don't have any goals in life. <laughs> like. <laughs> You couldn't even go out to, like, does yeah. nobody in your family love you enough to go out to dinner someplace important? Why yeah. are you eating your food? You Why drove here for a taco. Not? Yeah. <laughs> not even regular gas. You came here for a taco. <laughs> and you get a drink while you're there? Oh, you needed gas? Liar. Yeah, yeah okay. Yeah, exactly. Sure, fill up every day. I get it. That's right. Are you a rewards member? I know you're trying to get out of this bit, but I just member. want to keep going. I, am a I, I am also a rewards member. Yes. Cheats, I need so. to be. I need to be. Guilty as charged. Right, that's yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah. Like, literally, I, I, I paid, like, like, more, like, I paid full price at Weiss, like the, ga uh, the yeah, grocery yeah. store, for like a year because I just never got there before 6 p.m. and they wouldn't sell you the freaking membership card. Uh, Unbelievable. <laughs> so Unbelievable. I just, every day I'm just like, man, sucks to have to pay full price. One day I'll get this taken care I, of. I think Sheets will, will like start to run America eventually. It's Probably. a smoothly run place. I'd be okay. You know? I mean, they'll have yeah. to take on Bucky's if they want to do that. Oh, there's Bucky's, yeah. And what's the other place with the chicken uh, that everyone loves? I mean, there's um, also Wawa. No, no, no. Here. What's like the, the chicken place? I forget what it's called. Now. Oh, Royal Farms? No, no, no. Uh, I can't Zaxby's? think of it. No, but it's a place that's run like beautifully, like almost like air traffic control outside. Oh, Chick-fil-A. Um, Chick-fil-A. Yes. Yeah. Oh, I, I don't go there yeah. often. Okay. I'm not talking about gas stations anymore. <laughs> yeah. I've jumped to fast food. All right. So, you know, the, the tweets were, were vile and they, they cut ties with this person. I don't think this will end I mean, up changing I mean, you can take anything. one look at this person and know that this isn't who you want to work with, <laughs> Correct. but they learned that lesson, <laughs> yeah. I All guess. All right. Uh, so, <laughs> Breaking Bad... Let's talk about the lady who owns the house from Breaking Bad. This Wait. is actually very sad underneath it all, but this video of her. <laughs> you have to watch this video. She's she is like oh. fighting with this guy outside of her house because yeah. he's trying to take a selfie, as many tourists do, outside of the Breaking Bad house. This was also happening recently uh, to the guy who owns the house where Saltburn was filmed. 
Oh people, yeah, you know, like influencers mm-hmm. kept showing up at the house where Saltburn. He didn't was filming. know what he was getting he's into. He's like, "Get the clearly. hell off my property! Nobody was having sex with the dirt here." Well, this poor lady, she's owned this house for over forty years, and she has to deal with people taking selfies outside, while she has like a gate up yep. constantly. I wanted to get a picture. I'm a big fan of the show. Good whoopee shit! Oh, whoopee <laughs> my ass! Man, you ought to learn to chill a little bit, hon. I don't have to, you motherfucker. Hey, hey, <laughs> relax. Okay, it's it sounds kind of fake to me. I I mean, it sounds okay, a little. Fake. The audio's too good. It's it's like central casting. This Son guy's stylized. Yeah, He's got the, to call the like his sweater is too good sunglasses. to to be uh, cops on me. Can you just please let me get a couple pictures? And she looks like it's fake. She looks like she's the it's bad person off. from Goonies. I am done with you. Oh, what a and like, why are they filming from the back like this as well? Bitch boy. I don't appreciate being called a bitch boy. Yeah, you better go in. Don't tell me what the fucking do. Get, get in the house. <laughs> get in oh, the you house. Little, you son of a bitch, <laughs> dude. Better yet, Thank. Don't you get in the house. <laughs> Guys, I, this might be a product of my like uh, how jaded I am ever since the Tiffany Gomez thing yeah. happened. This is Tiffany Gomez yeah. 2.0. They're saying it's, it's fake. Her in a map. They're saying it's fake. <laughs> this guy's a meme. He does this all the time. Damn. Oh, for real? Okay, so it says in the community note, public records say the Breaking Bad house has never been sold. Boom. It's been owned by uh, Pati- Padilla Louis G, whoever that is, is for 40 years. I don't know if that's Padilla, <laughs> but... <laughs> Google Padilla? Yeah. Huh. I don't even know if it's actually in New Mexico. Yep. Like, uh, yes, it is. It's got the IRL address here. Okay, I'm glad that they didn't hoodwink me and film the whole thing in Canada. <laughs> <laughs> like every other TV like show. Like every other show. I went to Louis G. Padilla's Twitter, and there's one post, and it says, Hillary is only half reptilian. <laughs> what? <laughs> Can't be the same person. No. Or can they? <laughs> it could be. Or can they? It looks like Padilla is the... Uh, it, did, yeah. they, did they do last name, first name? We don't know. Padilla name, like, Louis G. I don't know. <laughs> like, otherwise, it would be Louis G. Padilla. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. They're saying she's real. Uh, Ed Bassmaster is a troll. So she's real. The guy's a troll. They, uh, wow. Well, I like that then. Yep. Because she's actually mad. Yep. Well, that's Padilla. Good can we her. get, can, I like, hope she was paid well. If we, if anyone out there knows this lady and knows maybe the person she's on the phone with, like, we, we could use <laughs> some details. She's on the phone with the cops. Here. Oh, she's on the phone with the cops. Clearly. This whole time? I mean, and they're just listening to her scream at this guy with a mullet. <laughs> they have to go. <laughs> and what's up with the car in the background? Is the trunk open? Like, is she getting grocery bags out? Who knows what she's doing? I it's need her to house. Know. I need it's to her know business. Uh, what's that the, that new saying about the simulation? Like, how do you know life's a simulation? Have you ever seen your neighbors take their groceries inside? <laughs> like, That's like if you have you ever seen a baby pigeon? I don't yeah. know, but yeah. I'm glad they haven't seen me take my groceries inside. <laughs> <laughs> well, you don't get groceries. It's just, from, it's just sheets bags. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Tacos every day. I see them taking their trash out, so yes. I know that this yeah, is all yeah, real. Same. Okay. same. All right. Trash out, but never groceries in. What's that about? It's yeah. very, very Where's all the trash coming from? It's very suspicious. It's the industrial trash there's complex. Tunnels, there's tunnels in their houses. Hmm. All right. Uh, okay, guys. This is uh, an interesting development. So the rust armorer, Hannah Gutierrez-Reed, was found guilty of involuntary manslaughter in the shooting of Helena Hutchins on the set of the film Rust, of course. Uh, Alec Baldwin's manslaughter trial comes up in the summer, so we'll have to wait and see what, hmm. what happens with that. She was not found guilty on evidence tampering charges Mm -hmm. but this is a i I don't know if this sets a certain amount of precedent it is crazy that we we live in a world where like the person in charge of the weapons will go to jail but the person who actually fired the weapon will not um it's about fame in in a lot of ways yeah and what they'll say is that uh, how could he have known well it is still his job to know Mm -hmm. on that set and And he's the only one who (laughs) arguably had a motive because he was in personal dispute with Mm -hmm. the victim yep Right. So it says a jury convicted Reed, age 26, after three hours of deliberation, finding she was ultimately responsible for the live rounds on set, one of which killed Hutchins uh, when it was fired from the gun held by Alec Baldwin. I noticed they say held by Alec Baldwin and yeah. not shot by Alec Good Baldwin. Good catch. Yep. Um, because is, interesting language. liberals think that guns fire they themselves. Just go, they just, so, they just go up. Right. They actually, Obviously, <laughs> it just it was a ghost. I watched an episode of a show where, so, where they actually make jokes about that. They said, why is it that yeah. when two people are, are struggling, a gun just goes off? Right. Like, why is that? Like it, It's like there's never anyone's finger on the actual trigger. Why is it that uh, when they... It's, a, it's the same reason like when you watch movies and somebody, like if you see two people get in a, a gunfight and the one guy gives up and he drops the gun, you're not supposed to actually drop the gun because it's primed, it could go off. 
off. Right. Um, they never actually point that out. Right. <laughs> it's like, uh, though it would be an interesting thing to actually have that show up in a movie somewhere where a guy gets in a gunfight uh, and then he drops his weapon and just like shoots him in the in the in the ankle. <laughs> yeah. But the comments yeah. are mainly about Alec Baldwin, though. Yep. They said gun safety 101 ultimate responsibility is with whoever's hand it is in. Baldwin pulled the trigger, even though he says he didn't. And Baldwin committed involuntary manslaughter. So it says, during the trial, prosecutors said the armor repeatedly flouted gun safety protocols that could have detected the live rounds she's accused of unknowingly bringing onto the movie set at the ranch outside of Santa Fe, New Mexico. Uh, basically, what it was, she also, like, she, uh, she claims that she asked for more help and that she was denied, and then other producers on the set said that's not true. She never asked for more They're for more in help. Baldwin's pocket. Yeah, uh, yeah. I mean, it could be. But you know, it's also about who's funding the film. He's a producer. He, he was. He did a, a, a lion's share of the of the funding for this film. But it's also, on top of that, they're saying that, like, they somebody suggested a logbook, and Gutierrez Reed didn't want to do the logbook for the for the project. So wow. her dad is a famous like film armorer who'd been doing it for like decades right. and decades and decades. Ah, this is this is the consequence of nepotism. Nepotism, <laughs> you know. Yeah. I, I just keep thinking about how um <clears throat> happy Hilaria Baldwin must be about all this to take the the heat off her for her fake accent. Cuz that was a big oh, controversy, yeah. you know. Now yeah. that Alex on this, it's like everyone forgot about her accent. Tales in comparison. I will never forget about her accent. Like, how do you say though. cucumber? <laughs> and I'll never understand like they were shooting live rounds on set. That was already discussed that this was happening. Uh, really? Yes. Yeah. Um, which like what, target practice? Yeah, like insane. Like shooting cans <laughs> and stuff like that. Um, and you like, do not want to see Alec Baldwin at Terran Tactical. No. <laughs> no, no. You I, do not I, want to run Wow, knowing him. that, you'd be way more paranoid, you'd think, to check the gun. Yeah. Right. That's insane. <laughs> Yeah. Wow. Well, he's free to kill. We already him just we year. know he's a sociopath, whether or not he intended for this to happen, mm -hmm. because he was like, "Yeah, I don't feel bad. Why would uh, I feel bad? Right? I didn't do anything. The gun did it. She's already got her uh, her mug shots. They already posted yep, her mug shots. She's in, she was remanded to custody. Wow. Yep. And she's gonna know. end up on mug shotties, isn't she? Yes, she is. <laughs> she is. Um, Great. Um, I, I don't know. Like, so I've talked to several people who have different opinions on whether Baldwin should be held responsible or something like this. Obviously, a lot of people believe that ultimately the safety precautions come down to the armor. But every that's basically a chain of custody, right? That weapon has to be carried along a yeah. chain of custody all the way to the person who's firing <laughs> it. And Alec Baldwin, who's got thirty years on film sets yeah. and was in junior ROTC when he was in high school or college or whatever it was. <laughs> Should have known better, but what can you do? And, and the, there was there was also videos that came out about him like showing up late to what was it? Was he showed up late to like the pre like the pre production stuff meetings and he wasn't paying attention hmm. and things like that? So it seems like there's a lot of negligence all the way around. Do you think this ends with him getting convicted no. No. in the year? No, no, no. I mean, oh, I, I mean, at the very least, I don't think it, I don't think it ends with him spending a day in jail. Really. Yeah. O.J. Simpson walks and so does Baldwin. Yes, yeah. You don't think in this world, this topsy-turvy world, we could actually see Baldwin go to jail? No, <laughs> And I then don't. he gets out and writes like a great movie. He has a <laughs> comeback I like did. Doritos. Look, Doritos got, sponsors him I in five no years. I got problem with him as an actor. I just, you know, don't want oh. to be, I just wouldn't want him I love him as an gun. actor in so many things. Yes. 30 Rock was great. Yep. Beetlejuice was great. So, all right. Woo! All right, then. <laughs> Jake Paul is going to fight Mike Tyson. Yeah. Um, it's funny because my my initial instincts when I see this is Jake Paul's gonna die, <laughs> but uh, it is true that Mike Tyson hasn't been in the best health the last couple of years, and I completely forgot about that until somebody pointed it out to me. There was uh, this image going around from an old uh, Mike Tyson pictured at, in a wheelchair at the Miami airport, raising new fears for his health amid problems with sciatica. Just weeks after he morbidly claimed his death is coming really soon, and yeah. I believe this was from 2022, so it's about uh, two years ago. Well, what's going on with his health? Uh, I mean, I don't know what his health is like now, but he's gonna be, if he's going to be fighting Jake Paul, there's like a 30-pound weight difference between the two. Jake, Jake Paul looks does, bad uh, either way, yeah. right? If he loses, then no, no, he I think... picked a fight that he shouldn't have, and then if he wins, it's like, it's not. oh, it's not a fair fight because the guy's old and he's unhealthy. They showed this old video of him from like four years ago where he, when he was getting back into shape for that last fight. Mm -hmm. and yeah. As like one of the most prolific strikers you're ever going to see, that he's going to he could just cave that. Dude's it, head. Which Paul is it? It's Jake. It's Jake Paul. He's and he's won a lot, right? Is he? Yeah. 
undefeated or he's I, lost I one. I, don't know what his I forget what. Is. But the point is, is that uh, also it's fair to point out like all of these are exhibition matches. They're still not right. Like, they don't even refer to it as what? What is the language they use in here? I don't think they even refer to it as a as a like, fight. As a fight, it's like yeah. uh, it's basically or it's not referred to as a match. It's like it gives you like a handicap, kind of like with golf, yeah. right? So it'll be interesting to see. It's also going to be on Netflix, so it's not going to be a standard oh. pay per view delivery. So you'll be able to watch it if you have access to Netflix because they're working to get more involved in live sports. Events. And I, they I, also I, made yeah. that stupid documentary about Jake Paul. Netflix did? Yeah. Oh, geez. I don't know anything about him. I've seen some of his fights. He looks like he knows what he's doing. Yeah. That's awesome. But I, but I also think Mike Tyson at his worst might be better than Jake at his best. Yeah. Just because Mike is a different type of animal. This watch guy him. is nuts in the watch ring. Watch old videos of Mike Tyson. It's terrifying. Ter it's terrifying. terrifying. Even when he spoke, it was terrifying. Like, yeah. this guy was just unbelievable. Yeah. I... I He's not like he's had a crazy life, but I love his story and I love his fights. There's a twenty dollars super chat here from Mike. He says the person holding the weapon is the one responsible for, yeah, for it. Ultimately, Alec deleted that girl. Yeah, the the thing is, is like how much time does Hollywood put into teaching the average actor what real ammo versus dummy ammo looks like? Uh, and when they go and they get their weapon, you have to always make sure where it is. Always know where your weapon is. Always point it somewhere safe. Always know what's behind you. But the point, of the fact of the matter is, is they're, they probably a lot of the time put a lot of their faith in the in the armorer and the people who handed it to them. They don't treat it with the same reverence this, that a person who actually understands how firearms work. This is probably a dumb question, I, I, but I don't know. Uh, do they ever shoot any type of ammo out of a gun in a movie? Like when they're shooting at someone directly? No. Uh, so, so so they so what they'll do is. Um, it's in post. Most of the time now it's done in post. Like a lot of companies even switch to using like rubber guns, which is becoming more and more common. Right, right, right. But like they have something that's called a non-gun for shots that are done close up where the gun is very, very close to another person. Uh -huh. But in general, no, like you're not going to see that. Uh, it's actually really interesting to see the way that they would show, the way they would line up shots with blood squibs mm. and in firearms and stuff like that. But you have to be very, very careful because you know, otherwise you can get a negligent discharge like what happened in The Crow and have that piece of... Of, um, like paper wadding that came right. through that wasn't even a bullet that just right. punctured his heart or whatever. You got right. a $20 from Crispy Leg Transport LLC. Show Mary about one minute clip of Mike fighting. We would have to, like, we could find. Uh, if you really want to. <laughs> you'd have to show me a specific one to, to show them. But um, I mean, we just sit here and do look up best Mike Tyson fights. Dude, he ate these people alive. Yep. When I'm feeling down, I look up Mike Tyson interviews from the 80s. Oh, <laughs> it's just, it's violent poetry. I love it. Also, for anyone out there with some time on their hands, if you ever feel like watching his stand up special, I'm putting he that in quotes. Stand -up special? It's not really stand up, but it's him telling his life story from off the top of his head with like a a PowerPoint presentation behind him. He's clicking through photos. It's funny. It's sad. It's amazing. It's amazing. And his, his podcast is actually incredible too. This guy's like turned into Socrates. Somebody said four non-guns. Yes, it's like the four non-blondes. But uh, <laughs> what? Uh, four non-guns. Uh, there's a band called the Four Non-Blondes. Was that the '90s? Yeah. Oh, okay. Was, yep. Yeah. Yeah. Watching like it's going to be crazy to watch him. But there's still there's there is like a 30 year age difference and. Yeah, and he's and he's not been fighting yeah. like for a while. Didn't though, Logan fight Mike Tyson already? No, or is that so. no? The the thing that happened no. recently that was just sparring was uh was uh Sneeko and that one guy. Uh, Sean Str Sh Sean Strickland. That was Strickland who fought him. Yes, Sh Sean Strickland. Yeah, yeah, yeah he got destroyed. That was hilarious. He still st stood up the whole time. I thought, which was yeah, kind of shocking. <laughs> but even like this clip of him from back, then, this is just four years ago. Strong. I don't want that strong dude punch. Dude. I just don't. Yeah. Dude, remember him on the plane yoking up that dude who was messing with him? Oh yeah, I forgot about that. You early, don't mess yeah. with Mike days Tyson. The podcast. Yeah. Oh, crap. It's so funny. Like I was like, why does Mike Tyson fly I commercial? Actually, might have been on that episode. Yeah. I thought wow. you were gonna say on that flight. <laughs> imagine, <laughs> no. <laughs> now imagine he's there and Tiffany Gomez is there <laughs> on the same flight. That'd be amazing. That Mike Tyson is not real. Yes. <laughs> yes. That could happen. All right, Incredible. what the hell's going on with Matt Rife? Yeah, so there's this comedian named Nima Yamini who claims that he was offered internet fame as a comedian alongside Matt Rife years ago. 
And in exchange, they had to do favors of a certain nature for executives mm -hmm. involved in this contract. So I we think this video could be satire. It's, it's it, to me it's a comedy. It's unclear, it's a, but it's let's a libelous look. comedy bit. But there's a twenty dollar one here from Mike. He says watching Mike Tyson is just an argument for boxing being the best sport. Mm -hmm. uh, it is a great sport, I think. Uh, I I, th I back like uh, I think this is satire. I, I think well, it's a comedy bit. Otherwise, it's super libelous. Let's it's not let's real. see. Let's see. Finally yeah. being exposed, thanks to one of the true kings of comedy, Cat Williams. <laughs> you know, before Kate I became Williams. wealthy in business, I actually had a. By the way, just pay attention to how many times this guy spins. Stand up comedy. I was on the way up. I was invited to a meeting with some Hollywood executives, along with some now famous comedian, and we were offered the chance for a deal at online stardom. But the only way to receive the contract was by sucking both of the execs off. <laughs> I immediately got up and walked to the door. That part right there is a tell to me but that he's lying. But before I could even exit, the other comedian was sucking both of their <laughs> simultaneously. That guy's name was Matt Reif. <laughs> Matt Reif. That's how he came rule number 799. <laughs> Just because someone is more famous than you, it doesn't mean they're better. They might just be gayer. <laughs> Not, Come on. He names Matt Reif, but doesn't name the executives. Right. Funny, right? Yep. Yeah, right. so Dom Lucra posted this as some bombshell news item. Like, this actually this was still. serious. <laughs> I love this still. That's what he says. His hair yeah, yeah, is yeah. the palm tree. Yeah, yeah. well, then um, it turns out Matt Reif saw this post and watched the video. He was very offended, <laughs> really? and he ended up blocking Dom Lucra on X. And he said, Dear Matt Reif, bro, I'm just doing my job. I never even added my any any opinion in my post about the allegation of you quote sucking off two hollywood executives simultaneously <laughs> to get famous i simply reported that someone else said you did it's nothing personal quick tip if you block the messenger people will always assume the message is real personally i don't think you suck you're pretty funny <laughs> oh boy it's just a prank bro you're poking the bear <laughs> Uh, I don't. I, I think don't. It's fake. I don't think it's real. <laughs> well, him blocking the guy. Do you think that adds a little bit of? I mean, creative? do we know if that's even created? If that's even a real screenshot? Oh, oh no! I, I like I, that it's Dom Lucra that got blocked. Yeah, I know. Do, yeah. we, do we know that he even we really got know. blocked? We don't know. I posted a screenshot today that I made up of the Krasenstein saying. Uh, Pussy and bio. Uh, and people thought it was yeah. real. In the chat, uh, Jake Martin says, "Are there people who don't think who who think this isn't a joke?" Jesus, man. <laughs> I yeah. mean, look. When I saw the headline, I was like, P "Plausible," yeah. because Matt Reif is he looks plausibly gay. <laughs> I'm not saying that he is. He's been in relationships with many attractive women. Like, what was he with Kate Beckinsale yeah. recently? Hmm. That, wow, there's gonna be an age gap between. He was two. right. Yeah. Am I wrong? Okay. That's what the movie Cougars based He's, on. We'll he later. is, <laughs> you know, publicly straight. Yeah. But Publicly he straight. has a very, you know, effeminate pretty boy look. And I was mm -hmm. like, you know, maybe, maybe there's a possibility. The video is over the top. I mean, and sweet dreams is playing in the though. background. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> I see stuff like this and I just think I think there's a lot of people, especially uh, in the conservative space that love to that that want mm -hmm. to know that this stuff is happening because they want to expose it so bad. It's confirmation bias. There's a, there's a yeah. liability to there's a possibility they just might want to believe everything that's right. said to them, and I just don't know if I, I buy it. Like, is it? Okay, I have a better question. Like, so does that mean like they were both supposed to suck both of them off, or was he supposed to suck one dude like, off and this dude was supposed to suck the other dude off? What are the logistics? Did they have a yeah. preference yeah. for who? Right. <laughs> right. And why two at the same time? That's the thing I'm looking at when I'm looking at this post. Like the word simultaneously <laughs> both, is doing a lot of heavy lifting. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> why both comedians at the same time? Why right. don't I have one meeting at 1 p.m. and the other one at 3 yeah. p.m.? Yeah. Can... Well, there are humiliation rituals out there. Yes. Well, maybe uh, you're more likely to be psychologically manipulated right. if the person next to you goes along with it. Right. I bet that's actually true. Okay. That's crazy. You're more though. liable to comply with there's somebody yeah. else next to you in the same position. I also, yeah, true. I also, there's a, another other Matt Reif on Twitter. Do you know yeah, Reif of Reif that. Technologies? Oh, really? Okay. He's a really cool guy. I think Ian even has some stuff from Matt Reif. <laughs> like, he messes with people. He'll, he said on Twitter yesterday, like people will message me thinking I'm Matt Reif the comedian, and he messages back as Matt Reif the comedian <laughs> at times. So 
that's that's a bonus. Love that for him. Yeah, but, I yeah. think so too. Blocked, and uh, I just Blocked. I think it's very very easy for people to just want to believe that it's true. So. Uh, it's going to be more impressive when some of these people start actually naming these unnamed executives, right? Someone yeah. said, no, like, like, no exaggeration. They said, one denial is worth infinitely more than hiding. All Matt Reif has to say is, I didn't do it. <laughs> Don Luca is right. People will assume silence to be an admission of guilt. <laughs> oh, God. So... He I, don't, I did not put poll. himself in this position. I don't think you, you know? can. I don't think you can operate that way though, because then you could. Ju they'll get you by making you respond to everything. Yeah. You know? oh, no. He so has you, an you easy defamation that. case, if not true. I guess we know where he really got that jawline. <laughs> well, that's oh yeah. Like God. if it's, if it's uh, not true, then there is some dan like that's a pretty libel like libel claim, right? That's crazy. I've I mean, never heard of this guy, but. The, the, oh. the other comedian Nima 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 Yima. is that even a real name Yima Yima is that even a real name he's got an Instagram I looked at his does that, Instagram does that mean anything yes, does that mean person. anything there's <laughs> videos of the CIA's now. made a lot of Instagrams yeah. Mm. Come on. And he's also, he was offered internet fame. Like, I love that. It's not like <laughs> fame. Not fame. Real like, fame. Look, yeah. you like fame. mainstream fame, but yeah. yeah, there's got to be real sex for that. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. Like, BJ only gets you internet fame. <laughs> right. Like, butt Brett, stuff gets you. Read the $20. <laughs> um... Uh, Chris Noski says, Brett, two at the same time was because of a bet between the executives on whoever finished first had to pay the contracts. <laughs> okay. Oh, okay. Man, oh, oh, man, oh, that's, man, oh, uh, man. The rumors are flying. That's just crazy. All wow. Right? So, <laughs> Amazing. I don't know what to make so, of it. So given that only one did it, does that mean they split the contracts? Did, did, well, like, look, with everything right. that Whoever Kat, finished first had to pay? Everything that's coming out about P. Diddy and everything that Cat Williams has been saying. Right. Not saying that Matt Reif went gay for fame, but right. some people definitely have. That's the thing is like... I. These things happen. Yeah. Like uh, clearly, they happen. They happen not even in Hollywood. They happen. That's why the joke's funny, things. is because exactly. it actually has a basis in reality. Exactly. It's hyper real, mm -hmm. and, we, and it's in the news lately. So that's why people have to be so vigilant with what they see. I also look at a Dom's post of the fact that it says developing. Yeah. yeah like, like, like what's what next? That? It's what's always next? The, the red alert, like code <laughs> yeah, yeah. red emoji. It's fire. It's like we yeah. found out what studio executives in that <laughs> yeah. studio. Oh, uh, it was man. Dan Schneider. Yeah. You're like, oh, and, and the guy on the left finished first. And the guy on the right took a while. That's yeah. That's what's it's actually that's Alec Baldwin. And that's how he gets out of it. <laughs> uh. All right, guys, we're going to move on here. So did you know that Hollywood is still heavily focused on the gender wage gap? This is even happening at the highest levels of acting right now. Because in the year 2023, the highest paid actor in all of Hollywood was Adam Sandler. Who would you have guessed before you heard the answer, though? I don't know. I'm not surprised. Um, you know in the deals he's had. Yeah, I would have maybe guessed Killian Murphy. No, no. Like, nah. Netflix backs up the money truck yeah. to, to Adam yeah. Sandler. He, kind of the way that, like, uh, imagine, like, how, like, I don't know what the comedians make for their specials. Right. But he is the movie version of the of the comedy special where it's like everybody they log into netflix they scroll for 10 minutes and they go i'll just watch comedy special yeah he has like an endless supply of movies on there yeah mm -hmm. he made four he made 73 million dollars but the problem is margot robbie came in number two at, at 59 million and they're saying that this is a gendered issue because there's a lot of men on this okay. list and not as many how women. many movies did adam sandler have to make and how many movies did margot he made, made Four, okay. she made one. So okay. they're, his are titled Murder Mystery 2, <laughs> You Are So Not Invited to My Bat Mitzvah, the one that has his daughters right. in it, Leo and Spaceman. None of which I had heard of. Um, uh, here, but there's an interesting, there's an inter interesting caveat to this. So also on this list are Jennifer Aniston, and also Ryan Gosling. Jennifer Aniston was a co-star with Adam right. Sandler. Mm -hmm. Ryan Gosling was a co-star with Margot Robbie. They're all, they always are disingenuous and refuse mm. to point out that when you have movies like this, there is a star and there is a co-star. And one of those people is going to make more money than the other ones. Now, they will talk about when the guy makes more money and call it sexism. Mm -hmm. But when Margot Robbie makes more money than Ryan Gosling, they're not going to address that. They're not going to call attention to it. Well, he he is the co-star Ryan Gosling, but he's not the he's not the title. Role, you know. But I'm but I'm saying that they 
will do this for other movies. Thank you. With any movie where a guy and a girl are both in the movie, they will talk about the, the wage gap. Yeah. Well, especially for like a rom com where the male and female are co leads mm -hmm. that are equally doesn't, relevant doesn't, to the story. Your, your but previous film it, history. Yeah, it's about your resume yep. and your track record. And also in the rom coms, you're more likely to have the guy who's older who has longer history. A longer history and therefore hey. is going to be paid more. But yeah, Adam Sandler at 73 million. And Margot Robbie at fifty nine million. It's a lot. Of so there's the gender wage gap for you. The mm. other ones that on this list were funny. So Matt Damon's on this list. I'm like, what the hell did he even act in in 2023? It was Oppenheimer and right. Air. Right. Wow. Um, so I didn't even remember his his part in Oppenheimer until and, you mentioned it. And then also Jennifer Aniston. Of course, she was in Netflix movie, and she was in uh, a couple of. All, she has a TV show, right? She has. Uh, really. What's that show that she's in um, on Apple TV? Maybe Apple TV. On pays, Apple TV. Maybe Apple TV. Pays Pays really well. Leonardo DiCaprio, Jason Statham, Ben Affleck, Denzel Washington. Now, Denzel Washington did Equalizer 3 last year, and I think he did that Macbeth movie, but I don't know if that was 2023 or 2022. Ben Affleck did, um, what did Ben Affleck do last year? I don't even, he, he was in know. Air. Uh, he had that cameo in The Flash. He had the cameo in The Flash. So I'm sure that was a heavy payday. Jason Statham did Expendables, and I think Beekeeper came out this year, so that doesn't even count, and he did The Meg. So DiCaprio's forty-one million. That can only be from Killers of the Flower Moon, right? Yeah, and Is that's that like half year? the movie budget. Mm -hmm. That's insane. Wow, I just I can't not let this bit go on without saying Tom Cruise is the greatest living actor. Yes, right. We course. all agree on that in this room, right? He was. Mary? He made forty-five. Mary, million. Right. He's the greatest I mean, living actor. I I, I guess. Tom Cruise candle up there in the Are room. you serious? He's oh, yeah. he's oh, not amazing. my cup of tea, but yep. that's okay. Oh my goodness. He but can do it all, Mary. They pointed <laughs> he it out here. He's certainly say, charming and talented. Yes. <laughs> when we were setting up the a TV like a TV the other day, I went back and watched that really earnest video him and Christopher McQuarrie made about like yeah. motion yeah. smoothing. That's <laughs> yeah. right. They're like, this is need, a PSA. They're like, we need to talk to you. I love that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> they're like, so you got a sub menu on your computer. <laughs> and they make it really difficult to find. It's not it's a easy. Conspiracy. <laughs> <laughs> and they're trying to make your movies look like shit, okay? I and love also, that. the clouds are fake. Yeah, well, I know Tom knows the clouds are fake. Uh, he's waiting for an alien ship to pick him up and take him away. Uh, Is that what the Scientologists believe? I believe so, yeah. I think they're waiting on a spaceship. I okay. think they were. I think they believe they were dropped here by aliens first. The spaceship I, Uber is the on spaceship the spaceship coming. Uh, might Jake be a Martin says, "Great Tom Cruise, greatest living actor." No, I would say Tom Cruise, greatest living movie star. No actor, because he can movie do serious, star. surreal mm -hmm. movies, uh, humor like Tropic Thunder, mm -hmm. Vanilla Sky for the surreal stuff, uh, and then the, and then no one does action better than him. He's uh, he doesn't play a bad guy as much, which is why I love him in Collateral so much. Yeah, he should do a bad guy more often. That'd yeah. be cool. Imagine him as a bad guy in Batman. That'd be great. I don't know who he'd be. That'd be fantastic. Yeah. Make him a crime boss. Make him a crime boss. That'd be great. That'd be cool. <sighs> Uh, but well, I, he just, I like the idea he can't stand to see himself on screen as a villain because he's so addicted to, to being to loved. Goodness. Yeah. <laughs> no, not to goodness. <laughs> to virtue. To people liking him. Well, this yeah. is the thing. We were, we were talking about that topic the other day where they were discussing about the importance of making female protagonists, mm. meaning mm -hmm. they want women playing good guy roles, not mm -hmm. bad guy roles. Mm -hmm. But then right. when they do that, the movies make less money. Isn't that interesting? Also, yeah. I saw this headline about Jada Pink at Smith referring to the mm -hmm. racial wage gap in mm -hmm. Hollywood and having been a victim of it Jada Smith says she doesn't act as much due to the pay gap and reveals people have said to her you don't need it you're married to will yeah. so this is because of that awful clip of Taraji P Henson on the podcast talking about how underpaid she is simply due to the fact that she is black mm -hmm. and she is so tired of working so hard all these years and not being able to retire at 50 um but i mean jada smith is saying that people pay her less for her acting roles because of the fact that will smith is the breadwinner of their household mm, i think and they assume she talented. doesn't need a paycheck but like think so she has no talent. nobody thinks of jada smith as like a talented actress do they no. i am um, i'm not gonna lie not that long ago i rewatched scream 2 and she dies at the beginning of scream 2 and all i could think of is like i wonder if will just watches this movie from time to time it's just like damn <laughs> There you go. Yeah. <laughs> Jada said she felt heartbroken for oh. Taraji B. Henson, oh. but she was happy that she was courageous enough to speak up and she related to the actress's sentiments, but in a different way. 
She said, Taraji P. Henson, she's the breadwinner of her family. Her pressures are different than mine. I've put that out front because if it's time to walk away, you can't. Yeah. You can't always. That's not always the solution. What people don't understand as well with us as black entertainers, we carry a lot of people with us. Hey, I just watched though. I just told you yesterday about the clip from Kirsten Dunst saying, of course I'd do another Spider-Man mm. movie. They pay me a lot. I got two <laughs> kids and a mom I take care of. Yeah. Well, is, is Jada implying that black entertainers give more of their paychecks to family members than white entertainers? Is, there, is, uh, is white selfishness a term yet? I'm it's sure kind of a bizarre claim to make with like no evidence. But. Somebody, uh, I, I lost who it was that said it. They mentioned Gary Oldman, Daniel Day-Lewis, and Brando. Um, I, I still think that when somebody thinks of an action uh, of like a movie star today, they mention Tom Cruise, Brad Pitt. It, again, even though these people aren't working as much, it's kind of like when people talk about the most handsome person in Hollywood and they still say George Clooney. I... Yeah, I love when, when they talk about your idea of like who's your idea of handsome, mm. people will still use Clooney as an example, even though he's not really in the public hmm. eye like he used to be. Like, you don't hear a lot of examples of other actors that are used as that, like, oh, it he's no depends. George Clooney. It depends. I, don't, I, I know a lot of people just think Ryan Gosling's an attractive guy or, or Clooney, but Daniel Day Lewis is an amazing actor and he has good range he's within retired. certain genres. He's also retired. But like, when I'm saying about Tom Cruise, is like they can do completely different genres and own it really well. Um, also, somebody said Denzel Washington over Tom Cruise every day. I would say yes. I would say Denzel. I've said more than a few times. Denzel Washington is my favorite working actor, but I wouldn't say that he's the greatest movie star. If right. That makes sense. That's did he make great. Tropic Thunder? Exactly. No. Did he? Did he make uh, Mission Impossible? No. What? What else? Um, Who? Denzel? No, I'm saying with uh, with Tom Cruise, like Interview with a Vampire. There's just so many different types of really good movies. Yeah. Uh, from from humor to Days dark. Of yeah, dude, that's a that's a. Uh, what was the one with the, with the planes? What's that one? Top Gun. Top Gun. Yep. Uh, that last Top Gun was incredible. The one with the planes. I don't know names. The ones with I the hardly planes. go to the movies. Yep. It's uh, there's there's just I, I love these types of discussions. These are this is the type of discussion you have with people that love acting the same way like actual like the comic book nerds will talk about their favorite characters and yeah. stuff like that. Healthy discussion between people and everyone can agree to disagree and I like that. Imagine yeah. if I came on and said Seth Rogen's my favorite actor. Yep. Somebody mentioned Risky Business. Risky, Risky business. business. Yeah, like his early days. Come on. Now. Did you get the Mikey's? Uh, Twenty dollar. Oh. oh, okay. Mikey said Jada and talent do not belong in the same sentence. <laughs> Yeah. Go listen to Jada's new metal band, what? Wicked what? Wisdom. What? Years ago, they were signed to okay. Sean Crahan from the from Slipknot's record label. <laughs> uh, I remember they came through my area uh, like 37 years ago. No, it was like probably 20 years ago. Willow Smith is trying to she's, do music. Right she's now. also trying to do music. She's. I would say she has more talent than her mom. She does. That Wicked yeah. a, Wisdom stuff is terrible. There was a picture going around of um, of Jaden recently. Where he just looks really distracted with his new girlfriend, or just like he's got like a model girlfriend. Oh yeah, I saw that. Yeah, and everyone's saying, like here he is contemplating the, <laughs> contemplating the world while his hot girlfriend is standing next to him. She's so superficial. Yeah. She doesn't understand that if mirrors are real, yeah. how are our eyes real? Exactly. How are the clouds real? <laughs> exactly. And now it sounds like an ICP song. I just uh, yeah yes miracles uh, magnets. magnets how do they yeah. work? <laughs> uh, I, the pay gap thing, it's always so disingenuous. It really does come down to mm -hmm. how much clout do you have in the industry? Do you have a long track record of films with reasonable success? Do you have a good agent that can help bargain your way into a good contract? All of this stuff is fairly simple to mm -hmm. explain to people who have like half yeah. a desire to yeah. operate in good faith, but they're not willing to do that. It just looks good on paper. I mean, we're talking about Adam Sandler. Mm -hmm. This guy's been on the top for a very long time. And also with Adam, it's funny, uh, he's done a lot of different types of movies, very serious ones, very funny ones. Yep. I like him a lot. Uh, what was well, it? it's it's people complaining on the behalf of Margot Robbie, yeah, not true. Margot Robbie herself, which right. is more irritating. We were making yeah. the thumbnails Agreed. today, and I was starting to get mo like Mary sending me these pictures of Margot Robbie making various faces, and I'm getting more annoyed <laughs> at the people calling her mid every time she sends <laughs> me her making a ridiculous face, still looking very beautiful. And I'm like, stop <laughs> yeah. it. The yeah. worst she looked was when she played Tanya Harding, and it it mm. probably took them a lot of work to make her look that way. <laughs> I, I like the idea. Idea that she shows up and she's like literally I just showed up like this and they're yeah. like damn it yeah. they're like could you like not put makeup on before we gotta you come to pretty work? her she, she comes into work with no makeup on they're like seriously <laughs> seriously yeah alright guys what would you like to see cringe or cue to the day Shane you decide 
You know what? It's a beautiful day, so I want to see some Q. All right, let's see Q of the day first then. First things first. This one is from Devin. It says, uh, these are our Aww. shop dogs, Rogan and Vincent Von Snuggle Puppy, <laughs> a.k.a. Henry. There's no way that's a real name. <laughs> Vincent Von Snuggle Puppy is a fantastic name for a dog. Love it. Amazing. Let's do one more here. Uh, this is uh, Mr. Peckerhead rating the hummingbird the Biggest damn hummingbird I have ever Hold on. Let's <laughs> <get to> one. <laughs> <We're seeing. laughs> Look at that beak. Uh, the biggest damn hummingbird I have ever seen. <laughs> wow. Technically, it's a heel of woodpecker. And, uh, he knows where my feeter is. <laughs> All right. Oh, well. Good for him. Good for him. Peckerhead. All right. He's getting fat off of that bird feeder. He is. All right. Now, Mary sent me the cringe of the day. So, brace yourselves, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> What is, do you want to explain to people what yeah. this is? Yeah, so this is a teenager in India who makes tens of thousands of dollars a month making viral TikToks that are from Midjourney. Pictures of pancakes. Day in the life of a teenager making 14.6K dollars a month. First thing I do when I wake up is always go to the beach just to get some fresh air. Then I find a comfy spot and get ready to start my shift. First thing I do is go into chat GPT and ask it to make me a $1 pancake. Then I ask it to make a $100 pancake all the way up to a million dollar pancake. Then I screenshot all these messages and go on to YouTube. Here I'm gonna simply record some Minecraft gameplay and take it all to CapCut. Here you're gonna put the Minecraft gameplay in the background and the screenshots on the top. Then you're simply gonna go to 11labs.io and screen record AI voice for all these messages. Then I'm gonna add that in as well and it should look something like this. Make a one dollar pancake. Then we're simply gonna export and post this video on TikTok. It's because TikTok new creativity program is paying people a thousand dollars per million views and just recently I got two million views on this video and it paid me over two thousand dollars. Day in the life of a teenager make oh. it's like the, So that's the future of content. Wow. It's the me it's like that meme from it's it's Joker when he's putting the makeup on says me getting ready to go to work <laughs> knowing there's an 11 year old YouTuber making 35 million dollars yeah <laughs> yeah putting on the clown makeup well this kid doesn't even have to show up in the video oh. it's just that is so sad it's yeah sad. anonymous yeah. non-verbal content made I for do this one day. the I just globalist put a audience Minecraft video on and just not even talk and just the yeah, whole day. this could be you. you. Try that. Yeah. This could be you yeah. if you had the work ethic, <laughs> if you, you had the a, creativity. You could be a sheet so much more. Yeah, oh. <laughs> like literally just hit go on the stream and then just leave for some sheets talking. That's it. That's I'm it. So you gotta admire the entrepreneurism. That's right. You know? All right, all right. Let's go ahead and get started. Now that we're what we're uh, 53 minutes into the show, ladies Ooh. and gentlemen, Mary, why don't you tell everyone what's going on with J.K. Rowling? Yeah. A British TV host named India Willoughby, who happens to be transgender, has recently did an interview with Byline TV and they called the cops on mm. J.K. Rowling for the hate crime of misgendering. And if you don't remember, this is actually the same person J.K. Rowling called a parody of a woman. And Mark Hamill got in big trouble for liking that tweet. I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, it's the same person. So they're, they've been in a, a bitter feud for going on years now. So this interview is absolutely insane to watch. And it shows you that anyone who lives in the UK has zero concept of free speech or free expression in general. Um, and their laws also don't protect them. Yeah. So this is a, a serious threat to throw J.K. Rowling in jail for using the wrong pronouns for she this said TV she, host. She's not afraid, right? She yeah. said she's not afraid to go to jail. I yeah. love that about her. Well, let's take a look at the, the clip of the interview. Mm. The, first off. Uh, which one are we looking at first here? The, the, the two byline TV. The two minute one? Yeah. Okay, here we go, guys. J.K. Rowling is definitely committed a crime. Hmm? I'm legally a woman. She knows I'm a woman <laughs> and she calls me a man. It, it's a protected characteristic and that wow. is a breach of both the Equalities Act and the Je Gender Recognition Act. Um, she's tweeted that out to 14 million followers. Um, if you check out the accounts that have been responding to me on the back of that, her trigger, um, it's absolutely disgusting, putrid, some of the worst abuse I've ever seen on social media. And I know I'm at the center of it, and I might be a little bit biased. Well, what are you going to do about this? 
What am I going to do about it? Um, well, I've been to the police and I've right. reported it as an issue. I contacted uh, Northumbria Constabulary yesterday. Um, so you reported J.K. Rowling. I have reported to the J.K. Rowling to the police. <laughs> they couldn't even get the pronunciation right said, between them two. I don't know that if that's going to be treated as a hate crime, malicious communications, but it's a cut and dried offence as far as I'm concerned. And at the end of the day, it is a hate crime. Trans gender identity is a protected characteristic, just as race is, just as sexuality um, is. And the equivalent of what J.K. Rowling said, calling a trans person a man deliberately knowing that that person is a woman and I am a woman regardless of what JK Rowling Sorry. says I've been through everything that's required of me my birth certificate says female <laughs> my passport all of my documents I am legally recognized well, as a woman well then. it must be that JK Rowling to deliberately and that is the key word misgender me knowing who I am is grossly offensive. It is so, a hate crime. So, <laughs> should go to jail, they said. India Willoughby also said wow. that this is the equivalent of calling a black person the N-word. <laughs> Unironically, did she say the N-word? No. I hope she did. No, she didn't. That'd be but, amazing. yes. I shouldn't um, even be saying she. I shouldn't either, but YouTube, you know? Damn it, no. That, there dicey. was a community, uh, community notes under this. It says, the UK discrimination, in the UK, discrimination against someone with a protected characteristic may be a crime. However, it is not a crime to refer to a trans-identified person by their sex. Such, as spe such speech is recognized as an expression of belief in protected under the Equality Act of 2010. Yeah, and the Gender oh. Recognition Act is actually a real thing that was passed by British Parliament back in 2004, where you're allowed to get a gender recognition certificate so that all of your legal documents, your birth certificate, and everything will be remade to recognize you as your identified This is gender. such good proof of how this ideology is a deranged, like, false religion. Because this is like, this all sounds like them being born again, right? But it's through the mm. bureaucracy of their sick, ideology there is right something like really really dystopian about the idea of being of the term legally a woman oh that's horrible like just because you're legally recognized yeah. as something doesn't mean that other people have to socially recognize you right. as such right that's like, government tyranny they were, you're born white or black legitimately right, <laughs> right. well look you, we could sit here and argue against the insane points all day but i think the majority of people who watched this interview are still in support of J.K. Rowling and on the side mm -hmm. of reality. So that's heartening to see. But in case you missed it, the person interviewing India Willoughby here is a man named Kalen Robertson. And I recognized him because Milo wrote an expose on this person. He used to be basically an infiltrator at the Canadian media company, Rebel Media. Oh, yeah. And Milo wrote this piece calling him the klepto queen of the far right. Whoa. And he said, if you've ever donated to Tommy Robinson, there's a fair chance your money didn't end up paying for his tour bus or security guards, but was instead diverted to pay for champagne fueled gay soirees in some of London's uh, most expensive zip codes. Where did he write this? Uh, it was on his website back when that existed. Wow. But I, I just recognized that wow. person from all those years ago. So maybe this isn't the most credible person to listen to as a jury. I don't have very, I don't have my glasses. I thought it was Matt Reif. No, I wasn't sure who that similar was. though. I do see the similarities. And J.K. Rowling has responded to this on her account. She said, lawyers advised me that not only did I have a clearly winnable case against India Willoughby for defamation, but that India's obsessive targeting of me over the past few years may meet the legal threshold for harassment. I ignored this advice because I couldn't be bothered giving India Willoughby the publicity he so clearly craves. Mm -hmm. Nevertheless, we must all do our bit to combat hate. So India will be glad to know I've taken note of his homophobia, racism, and humane stance on immigration. Nor have I forgotten India's shocking transphobia. It appears to have slipped what passes for India's mind that he's p previously called a fellow trans woman a man on this very site. And it's true in that screenshot, India Willoughby is calling a trans person who disagrees with them a man. Yes. So it's it's okay when we knew it, basically. The one thing that Willoughby said in that clip that I liked that I want to use for my business card is uh, malicious communications. 
That's oh. a great phrase. Well, this next clip that I sent to Brett is going to blow your mind All right. later in the interview. All right. They, uh, they asked India Willoughby if women have any valid concerns in regard to the trans debate. And India Willoughby was just like, no, I can't think of a single one. 1350? Uh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Here we go. Hold, please. And there we go. Um, misgendering someone in that way. Yeah. Um, what do you think that says about where we are as a culture? Um, I, it feels like society is disintegrating in terms of manners and respect. I think, I think there's actually a cult of free speech now where to some people it seems to be more important than bread and water. Free oh. speech. And it's not free speech in the sense of somebody living in China or um, some African country where they're restricted from having free speech in the sense that they can't comment on what's happening politically. <laughs> These are people who are living in Bognor Regis or Ipswich who are claiming that they don't have free speech. What, what do they mean by free speech? We all know what they mean by free speech. Free speech now is a euphemism for hate speech. Ah. And I'm entitled to say what I like without any consequences. So do you think the idea, even the concept of free speech has been weaponized? I think mm -hmm. so, totally. I. Uh, the the knee-jerk instinct for somebody is to say, of course I believe in free speech. Well, after my experience over the last three or four years, I don't believe in free speech. <laughs> not anymore. Wow, There's that no is such thing. disgusting. If you have free speech, literally, They're like, then get a, everything get a disintegrates. Shot of his face. Because is people he can say what seriously? they like, and there won't be any kickback or consequences for them. Mm -hmm. Do you think there was a time? Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. I would love to talk to the two ladies sitting in the back. What yeah, they, 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 they kept thinking? accidentally <laughs> focusing the camera on the people in the back. Like, women, they were literally one women. table over and hearing this entire thing. <laughs> Real women. I can't imagine what they were thinking. But yeah, it's, it's just clearly India saying, I don't believe in free speech. Mm -hmm. Free speech is hate speech. Yep. And free speech is disintegrating all of society. And we need to get rid of it. The, uh, also, mm. yeah, at some points it's like, yeah, there's been like two people who have detransitioned, like one or two. Oh yeah, they were, the claims in this interview, you should go watch it if you're in for something absurd. It was absolutely insane. Like the detransitioning thing, it's all been amplified by the media, but really wow. it's only happened to two people. Oh, and wow. then they ended up transitioning later on. Oh wow. The, uh, like, come on. Not just that. Really? Uh, the, the, the the refusal to admit that this is a political issue because she does address her about talking about like uh she's talking about what africa was it china Af china africa yeah that that acknowledgement that okay yeah you can't talk about free speech there you can't talk about politics there this is a political issue just the fact that yeah. it's governed by law makes it a political issue right. i think that because jk rowling is rich and lives in a multi-million dollar mansion mm -hmm. They believe that her free speech can't be infringed because yes. she happens to be privileged. But the, the, she's simultaneously pointing out that she wants it governed by law. They want it governed by law. They want you to be able to be prosecuted for something like this. Mm -hmm. But that's not politics. If it's law, it's going to be involved in politics in some way mm -hmm. because lawmakers have to pass these things. I mean, let's not pretend that this is like a logically thinking yes. person. Yeah, <laughs> they, I mean, they cannot be reasoned with. The basic things that they're saying are totally false. So then anything that extends out of that are, are fake too. Yeah. Everything else will just be a justification for your insane right. behavior after yeah. that. And there's no, they're like, not operating with logic. I feel like the interviewer, Kaylin, he was just feeding into it more and more to get yeah. India Willoughby to say more and more crazy shit. I felt that way when he asked if he, if she thought or whatever that free speech has been weaponized. Yeah, exactly. I was like, ah, yeah, I see it's what you're it's doing. sinister. It's a little bait, right? Little but bait. it worked. It worked, yeah, because we got that beautiful vomit <laughs> yeah. out of yes. their mouth. Um, also, J.K. Rowling got into a personal spat with Kaylin Robertson, the interviewer, really? because in a later video, he said, we invited both J.K. Rowling and India Willoughby for an interview, and only India Willoughby replied, J.K. Rowling, if you want to do an interview, the offer still stands. And in this video, J.K. Rowling claims that he misgendered India twice. You can, we'll, we'll play the clip. I don't know how good the audio might not be come through very clear. You can listen to the, the clip. Yeah. Mary says they say that Kaylin said, said them. them in my opinion I don't think he said him the but. first one does sound like them the second one sounds like him to me but again uh, yeah. I can barely hear anything so what do I know but listen to the listen to the clip it's it's literally just the four seconds so 
Honestly, I questioned them about the rise of detransitioners. I questioned them about some of the. Uh, I questioned them about the rise yeah. of detransitioners. Yeah, it's it's up for I debate, I guess. Some... The so, one sounds the, like a. The him, point possibly. is, okay, so here here's the other reason why all of this is stupid. Okay, um, when you. I was watching a sketch earlier where a guy's talking about uh, the great thing about, he goes, you know what sucks about being a liberal? And this was like a liberal comedian saying that like conservatives will just say whatever they want and, and they say, oh, you conservative, come on in. Again, not a conservative, mm -hmm. uh, socially very liberal on most things. Uh, but he talks about being a, a liberal is like, is like playing Jenga because you have to watch what you say with everything. Because have yeah. you ever tried to have a debate about trans issues with somebody in person? It's like playing Jenga. You have to be very careful about what you say. The way they control your speech is like, even when I was referring to the part about law, mm -hmm. I said she, yeah. and I had to stop and think, okay? Mm -hmm. Because I knew somebody in the comments was gonna be like, oh, don't call her she, it's a guy, whatever, fine. The point is they've weaponized the ability to make you have to think twice about what you're saying. And if you can slow someone down for even just a second, mm -hmm. a lot of people are just gonna be like, this isn't worth it. I'm just gonna stop talking about it. That's why, you know, like at, a, at the fundamental level, this is all rotten, right? Like look, thinking back to one of the first things we talked about, the Colin Rugg article or mm -hmm. the tweet, you know, he mentioned, um, he kept using like them when speaking about that Doritos person and, but then censored himself when he said moron, like he, he put asterisk <laughs> and moron. Yeah. Like when yeah. the, or when you talked earlier about the writer for that one article for Rust saying the gun that he held, you know, the way right, they worded it, right. all these things are being used and like subliminally affecting everybody. And then they affect the way we talk to each other. And you they know? wonder why people are less happy. Right, because everyone's tap dancing with language because yep. they've killed language. And we've, we experience it with everything you read. You'll see all the time. Mm -hmm. And now it's in physical form. You know, the crazy people. Death by a thousand cuts yeah. from the journals. Yep. And, yep. and we talk a lot about why the next generation is so depressed, right? I say a lot of yeah. it has to do with phones. I think it's living in your phone constantly. I think a lot of it is living in a world where you have to tap dance around what you're saying all the time. And there is no sense of actual freedom, yeah. even if it's self-imposed prison even if it's a prison of your own making a prison of I mean, society's making i don't think that jk rowling or india willoughby actually live in reality because they're both twitter addicts right right like maybe you could say jk rowling is blowing this particular social issue out of proportion and there's more to going on in the world that you could focus on and for India Willoughby saying J.K. Rowling is the most radicalized extremist person on the planet. That's an actual quote from the interview. If you go watch it, neither of these people are exactly living in an objective reality. Yes. What's India's original name? I that's, have no idea. That's Can we dead name India like, right now? In, in a lot of ways. I can't like, find it. There is a certain amount of brain rot that comes from living terminally on Twitter. Yeah. Both of these people could yes. benefit greatly from touching, putting down their phone and touching grass, grass yeah. some more. Yes, but yeah. J.K. Rowling's final word is, uh, aware as I am, it's a, an offense to lie to law enforcement. I'll simply have to explain to the police that in my view, India is a classic example of a male narcissist who lives in a, sp in a state of perpetual rage that he can can't compel women to take him at his own evaluation. I think that's love a good it. good spot to end I love that it. on. I think she's great. You know, obviously I disagree with JK on lots of things. Most. Things. Yeah, <laughs> there's a lot. That's. I mean, that's the other thing that this guy in this comedy sketch is talking about that I was talking about. Is like, look, the problem is you have to agree on every issue. Yeah. You can't just agree on like to to them right. on that side of the aisle. They have discarded with J.K. Right. Rowling because she disagrees with them on one issue when she when she would be a fantastic ally for them. But then right. for their, the right, their language, not mine. The right has the opposite problem where if we agree on one issue, we're going to take you into the movement yeah, right. as our as our spokesperson yeah. or yeah. whatever. Stop doing say, all of their it. movements at all. Yeah. Stop. Sorry. Everyone needs out there needs to stop doing any of that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like I'm, I'm just sick of the, the idea of movements at all. Like I said, I was, I was I've been watching this old show called Third Watch. And there's this uh, early episode where they're at this, um, the police are working this debate between Giuliani and Hillary Clinton. Mm -hmm. And it's really funny to watch how like, um, unimportant the politics were to this episode. They, they, they get into it, they mm -hmm. talk about homelessness, mm -hmm. they talk about a couple of other things, mm -hmm. but it's never framed in such a way where if these people disagree in the, in the show, mm -hmm. the female cop likes Hillary and all the other cops say like one cop likes, uh, the, the one cop that likes Giuliani's a dick in every episode, but people love him. <laughs> um, every other cop says, we don't want to talk about politics, but it secretly comes out throughout the episode that they like Giuliani. Right. So this girl, but they, they never funny. like turn on each other right. and they don't hate each it, other that, because That of it. shows before ideology fully blossomed into entertainment yes. like it's now it, the disease is everywhere 
you yep. can't you can't ignore it. It's literally like, it's in Doritos. Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's how bad it is. All right, let's go super chats. Okay. We've got Sheen H. Wilder. Happy Thursday, Brett, Mary, and Cashman. Yo. Brett, did you see the comment by Sheets? Maybe you could become a spokesperson for their tacos. Look, okay. I'm not saying that's the greatest thing that would have ever happened to me in my life. Oh, no, it is. Up there. That would be your peak. <laughs> but Everything would be downhill from there. Like, like may- maybe one day I have kids and that maybe supersedes it. But other than that. <laughs> maybe. maybe. Possible. Possible. Jacob Parada said, hey, PCC crew, I would like to invite you all to Narbar's Candles to try our St. Patrick's themed candles, such as Basil Sage Mint and Lemongrass Bergamot Bliss. Let's go. I watched this. Sweet. Great, I don't know if you're like nearby yeah. or whatever. I love candles. I watched this great comedy bit the other day where this guy does like, is the people at Yankee Candle need to be stopped because they come up with smells that aren't smells. <laughs> who was that? Uh, I feel like it's, I've it's seen this, this guy named Tucker who does these videos. He's really funny. Okay. He's, he's really funny Sounds comedian. Familiar. Um, but he's like the guys at Yankee Candle need to be stopped. Maybe I'll see <laughs> if I can find it and send it to myself. But it's uh, they, all the things he's listing are like not sense at all. Right. I have you ever walked into a Yankee Candle store? I don't want to because I'm afraid of like whoever is working there. Like <laughs> oh, I get you can use headache. a Yankee candle as a weapon. Uh, oh yeah. Like yeah, if they're you great bonked ha- someone in mm-hmm. the head with one of those. That's not a bad idea for like the apocalypse, you know? Yeah. I mean, if you're still still around, you could actually tie yeah. one to something and make like a mace out of it. Chuck it around. Definitely throw it at someone. Uh, you can wear them over your maybe fist. I'll see if I can find it later. <laughs> it's like brass season. knuckles, but they're Yankee candle knuckles. These things are huge. Also, yeah. I, and then we had like one episode we were talking about candles. We were saying like they're they're all filled with chemicals that are like. That's true. Yeah, it's true. But yeah. I also yeah. don't care that much. Oh, Mary. <laughs> Mary doesn't care that they're for the formulating fake candles or fake <laughs> candles with fake clouds. The, the seed oils are going to get me. Shoot. The fake clouds are going to get me. Shoot. The candles are going to get me. Is there anything that's not going to get the, me? That's the thing. Unfortunately, right now is no. Do, does, do I have to buy something called Patriot Clouds? I'm drinking to, lead right now. Do I ha- yeah. Like, do I have to, is there some, like, right-wing version of it that I have to well, buy? <laughs> I do take Chlorella tabs. They help with the uh, aluminum. What? Like, oh, yeah, they're good stuff. It's good stuff. It's like, it's like, a, okay. it's like, um, the, oh, I forgot, seaweed. The amount of supplements that. It's good for you. People on the internet will tell you you'll die if you don't take. Yeah, like, yeah. <laughs> it's just a never-ending list. It is. It is. No matter what, everything out there is trying to kill you. Yeah. Shane H. Wilder okay. said Mary is allergic to Cashman. You're trying to kill me. <laughs> Let's do one. I'm having an allergic <laughs> reaction right now. That's why the tears were coming. <laughs> right. <laughs> Bucky Ducky said, where is Phil? Is he safe? Is he all right? Uh, Phil is working. He's um, Phil's making the next great metal record. He is. Yes. That's why he's absent. With all that remains. Hold off on the rest and we'll come back after the fact. All right, Mary, tell us what the hell's going on in this movie. Anne Hathaway is starring in a new (laughs) rom-com playing a 40-year-old divorcee cougar with a man 16 years younger than her. Allegedly, this movie, The Idea of You, is based on a fan fiction about former One Direction guy, Harry Styles. And I've looked into that. It is apparently not based on a fan fiction. It's based on a romance novel by the same title. This is a, a... the a it's like for what is it grocery store sections for like romance novels yeah. for like cheap paperback yeah stuff. like paperback grocery store airport yeah. type of genre written by robin lee and she admitted that the male lead is inspired at least in part by harry styles so oh. it's in a way kind of a movie about olivia wilde's relationship with Harry Styles, but I think this is part of a larger conspiracy in reality that Hollywood is pushing age gaps where the woman is older and the man is younger Mm -hmm. so that we start to see this as more acceptable and more desirable. This has been going on for 20 years or longer. Yeah, but when when that show Cougars came out, Mm -hmm. it was tongue in cheek. It wasn't like... Yeah, like, but it's still being done in a way it was to still shift being the done, culture. Yeah, but this, this has been going on for a long time. I, this is the evolution no, of that. No, but there is a definitely a specific push in the last couple of years. I mean, think about MILF Manor, for instance. What is that? You never heard about that? <laughs> no. MILF Manor, the, it's a reality show where they invite a bunch of single moms in their 40s to their 60s. 
And on top of that, they're inviting their sons oh. who are in their 20s to 30s. Why? And all of them Why? date each other in this Why? weird pit of just incest despair. and debauchery. A circle of despair. hell in the inferno. And yeah, perhaps the it's examples have, Perhaps the examples have gotten more like debaucherous, but network television and TV in general has been doing this for 20 years. Do you think in this direction though? Like yes. woman. No, no, yes, absolutely. Before and, it would have been the other direction. And did you now. see this trailer? Like the the sincerity behind it? Yeah, let's like take a look at that. So serious. Here we go. How did you guys Listen meet? We need song. to know the story. Oh. We met at Coachella. <laughs> Hi. Hi. This is your trailer? Yeah, I'm in the band. We're performing on the main stage. August Moon? Yeah. I met That's someone tonight. Cool. I feel a little inspired. This one's called Closer. By Nine Inch Nails. This is so awful. <laughs> so then, we need you up front. Okay. Like, now. I don't know if you remember me, but... It's a movie about Coachella. bangs. Yes. I in the real life, in real well, life, she's creeped out when the guy artwork. finds her. Yeah. I'm back. Yes. I like these. Ah, fantastic. This piece is from my friend Sarah. What's it called? Unclose me. And what do you feel when you look at it? Oh, I love this. Everything. Oh. <laughs> oh. It is almost annoyingly oh, sincere. Everything. <laughs> everything. He's got a little '90s boy uh, earring. It's nothing, really. I like it. Ew. Yeah. Is this yeah. satire? <laughs> this is so dead serious. I'm too old for you. <laughs> oh, they're gonna kiss anyway, guys. Get it? Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, this is not shifting culture, though. I'll tell you that. What about what people will say? I'm sorry, Anne. I don't care what they say. So this is so stupid. Oh. <laughs> when you middle-aged women, I didn't know my something. being happy would piss so many people. Yeah, imagine off. your mom watching this. People hate happy women. People hate happy women. What are you gonna do? You dress? No. What? <laughs> wow. That was maybe the worst trailer I've seen in a so, while. So like they're gonna have a big falling out at some point because the Sorry, age, gents. Uh, to, to all the, the young oh. gentlemen out there, when you Ooh. find your 41-year-old cougar, I'm sorry to say she's not gonna look like Anne. Oh Hathaway. no, no, because Anne Hathaway looks like she's 28. Yes. That's the ironic part, right? Yeah. Um, that was really bad. <laughs> that. Yeah. Can I tell you my Anne Hathaway story? Yeah, when sure. Go her? ahead. She. I did background acting for a little while, uh -huh. and the first job I ever did, uh, they show me. They tell me to show up at a warehouse in Brooklyn. And when I got there, I was like, I think I just showed up to like a porn set. It was so bizarre, creepy, creepy warehouse. And then they put me in an elevator to go get like makeup done. I, all I, I they hired me because I had tattoos. That was it. And I needed okay. money really bad. I get in the elevator and then there's Anne Hathaway and I, I'm on her movie set. Uh -huh. And so the thing all I had to do is sit in a chair across from her for a movie. I think it's called Song One that she might have written or something. She's beautiful. And this is like 15 years ago. And she's sitting like closer to me than that chair is and I just start blushing because she's staring at me I blush I turn really red and they have to keep cutting because my my face is getting so red I'm like I just this is uh she's too pretty and then it ended with me having ice cream with her husband uh oh. on a, it was it was actually a very pleasant day but uh <laughs> and she was very nice how that movie that movie was so bad though yeah. don't go watch that movie I'm sorry how old was the, his character yeah, so in the movie, the Harry Styles character is 24 and she is 40. Okay. Yeah. So, so we got a $20 um, from Mikey. Mm. I'm just waiting for the lesbian raw. Wait, what is this? Rom com? Rom com sponsored by U Haul. <laughs> the, um... what? What? Okay, and I wanted to read from the description of the original novel from Robin Lee. It says, what if your teenager's fantasy was your reality? Ooh, that's bad. 
And the cover That's of bad. the book is just a woman holding her sunglasses. There's another 20 okay. from Mikey says rom-coms. Rom-com. Rom-com. Yep. Wow. Okay, so this is based on Celine Marchand, the 39-year-old owner of an art gallery in L.A. She is re- reluctant to take her daughter Isabel to meet her favorite boy band. But since her divorce, she's more eager than ever to be close to Isabel. The last thing Celine expects is to make a connection with one of the members of the world famous August Moon. But Hayes Campbell is clever, winning, confident, and posh, and the attraction is immediate. That he is all of 20 years old further complicates things. I just saw, uh, I, I kid you not, I just saw like an <laughs> article of like Alex Rodriguez, the, the baseball player, taking his daughters to see Olivia Rodrigo. He's like, I have no idea who this person is, but she's uh, she's really good. So the guy's version of this uh, would be Alex Rodriguez yes. uh, going on a date with Olivia Rodrigo. I love that in the, in the, in the book. Woo! They'll be doing the song when she's yeah. like, getting her finger up. This is a song by the band. We could get Carter to star in this movie. This is August Moon. I like that in, in the book, in order for her to get closer to her her daughter, she's got to get closer to the boy band guy first. Yes. Like, that is really bizarre. Yeah. That is just... <laughs> I mean, it's definitely, like, middle-aged women fantasizing about yeah. how they still got it. Right. This is, like, a lesser, ver- a hallmark version of Fifty Shades of Grey. You know? Oh, yeah. Because, like, like, Fifty Shades of Grey was based on Twilight, right? Is it, or is it, it the other way around? It was a Twilight fan fiction, yeah. yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah, this this is like just that hallmark cheap paperback. I, I also see a lot of this is like there's a, a huge part of the culture, especially on social media, that glamorizes the idea of the wine aunt, the you know the woman who yeah. gets to who, she gets to interact with her sister's kids, but yep. she has none of the responsibilities. Yep. She gets the glamorous lifestyle. She gets to travel. A lot of that. She's got her corporate job, and that's portrayed a lot in social media as a, a really is something to advocate for. Whatever you feel about that, it's something that the culture pushes. Is so a- you're like, hey, at least Anne Hathaway is playing someone who is a mom. <laughs> like, uh, yeah, like I, I see these things. And, and also we are in a culture where people are getting married less mm-hmm. and people are getting divorced more frequently. So stories like this, I always see these things as like supply and demand. Oh, what right? this is, mm-hmm. this is a fantasy about the grass being greener on the other side after yes. you divorce your husband. Yep. Mm-hmm. It is in a way glorifying divorce yep. as yep. well. Great. Um, yeah, it says, what begins as a series of clandestine trysts quickly evolves into a passionate and genuine relationship. It's a journey that spans continents as Celine and Hayes navigate each other's worlds from stadium tours to international art fairs to secluded hideaways in Paris and Miami. So here's For Celine, it's a reclaiming of self as well as a rediscovery of happiness and love. When their romance becomes a viral sensation, both she and her daughter become the target of rabid fans and an insatiable media. Celine must face how her romantic life has impacted the lives of those she cares about the most. Okay, wow. so th- there could be an interesting, uh, and I, I don't know if the movie would ever go this direction, <laughs> but there could be an interesting discussion about whether she takes her daughter's feelings into account while going on this relationship. But that's not the selling point. The selling point to the people watching, because most people who consume media do so passively and are not looking at it as critically Mm -hmm. as somebody who does something like this does. What they're looking at is private planes, exotic locations, Mm -hmm. all of these things that you sell the image on. Remember what I was saying about the why not? The why not who gets to travel the world and she gets to come back from Greece for the holidays and bring gifts for her nephews and nieces while Mm -hmm. having none of the responsibilities of a parent. This is trying to bring those two worlds together and sell you on something that's very, very surface level. This is where the culture of divorce parties originates. Yeah, celebrating your uncoupling. I've seen TV shows doing episodes about that going all the way back to the early 2000s. You can only discover your yep. true self and love yourself if you leave your husband. I mean, that's in Eat, Pray, mm-hmm. Love. In the mm-hmm. very beginning of yeah. Eat, Pray, Love, she has her husband begging to reconcile their relationship so that they don't have to divorce. And wow. she's like, no, I just, I have to learn how to love myself. And then wow. she leaves. I have to find myself. Are they done forever in that book yeah. or movie? Yeah. Then there's nothing in the end where. Yeah. Then she has like a quick fling with a younger dude and then wow. they break up and then she goes and travels the world and then she finds the love of her life elsewhere. It is, it is interesting that like one of the things that I think about more frequently than ever is the idea that as we, people are getting married later, right? Is the idea that people are always looking for the grass being greener on the other side. They always think they could do just a little bit better. Uh, I think that comes back a lot to cultures of narcissism in society, Mm. but the idea that, you know, it's, it shouldn't be work. It should be easy. 
It should come naturally to you, but that's not really how the real world but, works. You know, it's someone else should make my life easy. Yes. <laughs> that's what it is, is yeah. I'm owed something. Well, that's what the, I deserve this. The dating apps are so weird to me because you can just kind of like tailor your perfect, quote unquote, perfect date, right? Like what, what do they look like? Or yeah. kind of like how people are tailoring their babies now, you know? Uh, I don't think it's right, you know? I, I, I'm dating glad eugenics. It is dating eugenics. Uh, I'm, I'm glad I never had to do that world. I mean, that a lot just comes from technology, right? You're, you're not meeting your, your wife or your girlfriend in your hometown anymore. Yeah. You're, you're meeting them in other places. It's not just meeting them at co in college anymore. You're yeah. meeting them through these apps. I, it's good to meet someone who has little differences than you. I mean, you should have core values similar, but, uh, but even those can hopefully change and become better together. Mm -hmm. But I'm seeing all these people who are my age or older looking for this person who's gonna fit every box on their dating app and it never works out. I think when you look at movies like this, what you're seeing now is like, look, these types of books were always popular, will always be popular for women, right? Mm -hmm. But now you're going into an industry where Hollywood more and more is hiring female executives and they're catering to female stories being told, especially in the age of streaming. I think that's a, that was Amazon Prime, right? This isn't coming out to theaters, right? You can make the moving version of a dime store paperback novel for a movie or a television show. Yeah. Now, I think there will be a market for these types of films. I mean, it's not going to make gangbusters at the at the box office mm -hmm. like some movies will. It's not oh, going. Yeah. To the, it's not going to the theaters. But these movies will find an audience. The lonelier people get, the yeah. more of a market there will be for movies yeah. like this. So, what I think they should do. They should sell physical copies of this, and this is the genius. What you do is you sell them to liquor stores right next to the wine, and you put it right next to the boxed wine. This DVD, and they just so you you put it next to the cat litter. Yes, the cat no, litter look, and the boxed wine like, right next to each other. I hate to break it to like any of the women in their forties or fifties who are going to be watching this, but. You're not Anne Hathaway. You don't look like that. Yep. Okay. And Harry Styles isn't going to fall in love with you. Yeah. He's trans now anyway, right? <laughs> I'm sorry. He's, a, but... he's like, unfortunately, you're not going to meet a dude in a boy band. Yeah. No. This movie like... ends with this guy. And if you did, your clothes. daughter would hate you. Yeah. <laughs> if yeah. you if you actually took your daughter to a Harry Styles concert and you started dating him, she would hate your guts. Yeah, that is true. Also, understandably so. Why is Anne Hathaway doing this movie? Yeah, it is weird, right? Why? For someone with her, you The know, one I did of hers was like her, like, it seemed like her passion project. It was super low budget, but she's done like... She's I mean, an A-lister. Uh, the Batman movie, like, yeah, I mean, those are just two of many huge movies she's done. Why this? I guess this is just what she has fun Maybe making. What, she wants what? To do. I don't know. I mean, there's no, like, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, one of the things I like, if you like, I, I watched this video once where they talk about Keanu Reeves. He'd make like one good movie, one bad movie, mm -hmm. one good. Movie. Like he, he would never. The idea was like he can't say no to his friends, so his friends will ask him to do a movie. <laughs> like, okay, and he'll do it, and it won't be very good. And then That's his awesome. next okay. movie will be good, right. and the next one will be bad. Right. So I think that this interview with the author of the book explains everything that we need to know. She said, the idea of you was supposed to be a story about a woman approaching 40 and reclaiming her sexuality oh. at the point that society traditionally writes them off. The romantic aspect of a 40 year old woman with a 24 year old pop star does hint at fan fiction tropes on the surface level. However, the idea of you is more focused on the societal issue of aging and women's worth being mutually exclusive God. instead of being the most classic fuzzy romance. Yeah. Um, so really, this is supposed to make older women reclaim their sexuality, <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. which know, is just... And... Hollywood is the, the last thing that they need to do. Hollywood is the industry. Like, again, they're, they're pushing this stuff later and later. Plastic surgery, all of these things. So people don't feel like they're aging out of these things. Mm. There's like, going to be a really sexy scene in this movie where she freezes her eggs. Yes. Oh, for, yeah. for him, you know, like that'll be a thing. It's and really it, romantic. And there's going to be another sexy scene. They leave like, the IVF clinic and start kissing in the rain. <laughs> Yeah. Oh yeah. Oh. Just thinking about those future just, heartbeats. Did Did you see the other day that uh, like the the V like the VA band that famous kiss on uh, like, of the sailor? Oh yeah, yeah. I did. What so, is up like, with that? I'm picturing them. They do the kiss outside the. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, what? The, you know what, the, what the guy getting back from World War II and he's dipping oh, the girl. They uh -huh. banned yeah, that they, picture at the V yeah. at the VA. Yeah. Why? Because it's not inclusive. It's offensive. Yes. 
We hate love. Yeah, we hate love. Well, they, they, I think I, they called said they said not inclusive, so I think they hate straight white love. Yeah, I, that's true. I don't know. Yeah, it's Whatever. uh, yeah. There's the outside of the IVF clinic. They're gonna do that. There'll they're like, a, we hate oh, when Nazis lose. Oh, really, there'll be a really dramatic scene where he's like, I don't want an adopt <laughs> adopt a baby. I want to have. I want to have your I babies. I don't want a surrogate. I want to have you when you're 60. <laughs> when you're ready. <laughs> Let's go to Super Chats. Okay. Hi, Volter 75 said, speaking of clouds, will you guys review <laughs> Twisters? I think we should. I think we should. I think what we should do is okay. we, sh we should have Mary watch Twister. It's so a classic. She can understand the magic that was Bill Paxton and uh, Helen Hunt. Yes. And then after you see Twister, we go right into watching <laughs> Twisters. <laughs> Okay, yep. I'm up for it. So when what, is that coming out? Uh, I think it comes out in May. Is it a remake? Is it a sequel? It's, it's, I, it's no, it's not a remake. It's like okay. a, it's a different. It's the kids thing. of Helen Hunt. Yes. Okay. I it's know. technically a remake. I thought they said it was something else. It's Interesting. Not like a, it's I not didn't see the trailer. Tati Platy said, "Big avocado is behind global warming. Fad oh, food yeah. put into things it don't belong to, like burgers, getting white women to eat it more. Climate crisis. Yeah. Okay, I, but I love an avocado. I burger. do too. But like, they are evil, unfortunately. Big avocado is evil. <laughs> Sorry, <laughs> Mary. <laughs> the last of my kind said, "What cloud? Where are clouds? Why? What have you heard?" Where are clouds? Well, there's vintage clouds that God put there. And then there's also the clouds that the cloud factories make. And then there's also the clouds that are evaporated from the poison forever chemicals that are put up in the in the air. And there's also the chemtrails, which Wait, is the ones so everyone thinks of. What, what is in chemtrails? Uh, that's uh, aluminum, probably. Uh, there's a lot of aluminum in those things. Okay. And guys out there who want to promote the abolishing of the fake clouds, don't let them fake. Don't let them fool you. Contrails and chemtrails are different. Contrails evaporate behind the planes. Chemtrails are stretched out throughout the whole sky, mutilated, perfectly beautiful blue sky, and then that turns into your next day's rain of poison. So keep an eye out. Love how the question made no sense and you just instantly. I knew what you needed. Like, okay. I knew what they needed. <laughs> um, Surenko Production said everyone also forgot Helena's husband joined after. Uh, yeah, so what also, so with he, her husband? he joined the movie as a producer afterwards, and he went to a meeting with Alec Baldwin just days after his wife died. Yeah, that's really weird. Okay, so they were banned. They're saying the photo was banned because it was an un a non consensual act. They're claiming it was a non consensual act, though the woman gave interviews saying that it was. There was also all sorts of who cares. Um, there was all sorts of like uh, hullabaloo around whether this was the actual woman because they're obviously like figuring out who was who back then for something like this mm. it would have been very very different. But yeah, no, it was actually Mildred. So it says, <laughs> yeah, no, it was Gladys. Uh, sailor kissing a woman he did not know on the streets at the end of World War II. Secretary Dennis McDonough acted hours after a copy of a memo from a VA assistant undersecretary requesting the photo's removal from all VA health facilities was shared on social media. The memo said that the photo depicts a non-consensual act and is inconsistent with the department's sexual harassment policy. Did she file a sexual yeah. harassment claim? That photo's rape. It's That's what a photo. Saying. No, that photo's rape. It's rape to look at it. It depicts rape. Let's uh, let's let's okay. go. Let's move on. Shall we just talk about yeah. Seth Rogen? We've gotten all the old women out of the way talking about now. Now let's talk about Seth Rogen and not because we kids. we are equal opportunity haters on this show. Mm. Seth Rogen is getting dragged online right now for some resurfaced comments that he made praising his child-free lifestyle and bragging about all of the weed he gets to smoke and all the movies that he gets to watch with his wife. Uh, he is 50, right? And no, his wife is 42. He's like 40 something. I, th I thought he was way older. Oh, really? He's yeah. actually 20 and she's 42. He's not aging particularly well, but Andrew Tate <laughs> posted this screenshot from the interview saying, soulless, movies and weed, great. Oh, wow, naked with a girl? OMG, mm -hmm. but not to make kids, right? These people are dead inside. So here's what Seth Rogen said in the quote. We're effing psyched all the time. We're laying in bed on Saturday mornings, smoking weed, watching movies naked. If we had kids, we could not be effing doing this. And that was his way to brag about how great it is to not start a family. So I looked into where this came from. It was because he was on the Diary of a CEO podcast last year. It wasn't even that long ago. These are recent comments he made. He says that not having kids with his wife, Lauren Miller, helps him succeed in his career. So that doesn't go for just women, right? Mm. It goes for men as well, according to him. He said, uh, not having kids helped me succeed as well, definitely. 
There's a whole huge thing I'm not doing, which is raising children. Some people want kids. Some people don't want kids. Honestly, you're just told you go through life. You get married. You have kids. That's what happens. And me and my wife, neither of us were ever like that. Honestly, the older we get, the more happy and reaffirmed we are with our choice to not have kids. Mm -hmm. We're in the prime of our lives. We're smarter than we've ever been. We understand ourselves more than we ever have. And we have the capacity to achieve a level of work and a level of communication and care for one another and a lifestyle we can live with one another that we've never been able to live before. Me and my wife seem to get a lot more active enjoyment out of not having kids than anyone I know seems to get out of having kids. Jeez. So he was very verbose and very articulate in explaining that he is an essentially selfish person, as is his wife, and they have shaped their lifestyle around their selfishness. Mm. That's, that's essentially what that means. Mm. And he was throwing shade at people he knows who do have, have mm. kids, right? Because he's uh, implying that their, their relationships are worse off that they don't have time to do anything they enjoy, that they're not working as hard, and he has it better off than them. I just, I, I wonder how many uh, times they've <laughs> had to sacrifice the babies in her womb. I wondered about that as well. Deranged marriage yeah. that, you know, is fake happy. Uh, it makes me sad. I know people, uh, I don't, uh, how old you say Seth was? He's 40 he's something? 40, I thought he said he was 41. So he's like a little older than me. But I, I know people my age who have been married and kind of on a similar trajectory of no kids. And they're starting to be like, we should have had kids. We should have done because now there's you're too old especially like mm -hmm. if you're a woman there is a thing when when you get old carrying a pregnancy well, is the, way tougher the scary part for this is like he says in the interview that she was just as gun ho about this as he was that she didn't want to have kids either well if she changes her if he changes his mind he can do whatever he wants he mm -hmm. can divorce her and go find right. a young woman and have kids all he wants she doesn't the have stakes that option. for her are so yes. much higher and also they're in one of these relationships where they like took seven years to get engaged yeah. <laughs> and because they were high too much yeah, high, right. They, they were so high. They kept meaning to propose, on. but he couldn't figure but then out it got where high. the wing. Yeah. Like, where's the ring? He's like, I have no idea. Where then he is. got all neurotic because <laughs> it got to him. It was the wrong <laughs> strain that day. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, and then in another interview with Howard Stern back in 2021, he also made extensive comments about his child-free lifestyle. And he emphasized that his wife doesn't want kids more than he doesn't want kids. He said about uh, Lauren Miller, she doesn't want kids. Hmm. She wants kids less than I do. And he said they have too much fun to factor babies into their family. I don't know anyone who gets as much happiness out of their kids as we get out of our non-kids. Wow. And that's when he said we're effing psyched all the time. We like smoking weed and watching movies. Blah, I don't know blah, blah. if anyone has as much fun as we get out of our abortions. Right. It's like... I, I can't imagine that that hasn't happened. I guarantee it hasn't. I mean, who knows? But I, I just think this is the product of a world that we live in where you're, they promote being an adult baby. There is a human cost to everything. Oh, yeah. So yeah. Twin Yellow Super Chat here from Bender the Offender says, so they're dinks. I don't find that surprising. There uh -huh. are other dinks in Hollywood, but they don't talk about it as much as Seth Rogen does Chelsea because Handler. he's clearly overcompensating for yes. something. Same with Chelsea Handler, who who yeah. goes overboard yeah. to promote the uh, the idea to other people. Uh, you do. There's a lot of content online from people. Uh, promoting the idea of like, look, I was pressured into having kids my whole life. And there is a, an argument to be made that if you pressure them too much, there is a strong possibility that somebody could go the other way. Like I point out all the time, when people tell me to do stuff on here, makes me less likely to want to do it, okay? <laughs> so if people are pressuring you constantly, not everyone is gonna sit there and think about the good of the family bloodline mm. or uh, the chance to leave the world better than the way you found it. Not everybody thinks in such esoteric terms. Right. Yeah, but that is the base quality of humanity. Yeah, is to just procreate. <laughs> like, so they're saying the the cope is strong with him. I don't know if he's even thinking it through in that in that terminology. Maybe it will be. Maybe later yeah. on it becomes cope. Dude, for sure. I was thinking like while I'm looking at the quote, it's so much that I wonder if he really means this or this is him actually coping. And maybe he does want kids. Yeah. And he's too old. He's past the point now. Well, I mean, no, he's not. He's she not. Is. She is. Uh, 
Yeah, I wonder if that's the case. Well, he's just going on and on when it's yes. like, bro, we didn't no, even ask it. for you but to defend your decision. The, interview might, the interviewer might have brought this up to him, but also we talk a lot about the narcissism of Hollywood. Yeah. Maybe it's not cope. Maybe they just are that narcissistic. I don't know. Uh, you know, you're, and you're going to have people like me who are going to be like, oh, I don't care. Like, let the dude do whatever he wants. Right. All that means is he's not. I mean, we his are jeans on. we are probably better off mm. not having tiny Seth Rogans for running sure. around this world, mm. but for sure, it's sad. It's sad that some people are so selfish. And I think that their hatefulness for people who do decide to have children really comes out even when they're trying to sound like they're nice about it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like there's this subreddit um, called Child Free where all of these dinks uh, or singles, sinks, they, <laughs> they talk about how great their lives are not having kids, but most of the time the conversation veers off into hating kids hating parents for having kids yeah. and taking them out in public and ruining their dink experience going to restaurants and coffee shops all the time. So I just took a, a quick look at what's going on on that subreddit and I see, don't bring your babies to coffee shops, people. There is literally zero reason. Babies don't drink coffee. If you want one for yourself and have no place to put them, just get one and leave. A local coffee wow. shop I frequent is mostly college kids. And today, a couple girls brought in a baby that was screaming for like 10 minutes. Everyone's just trying to do their work. I wanted to gouge my eyes out. Of course, wow. the parents just ignored it and let it, it cry. Yeah. Wish there were more child-free spaces where I live. Yes, They're look, always talking like this. This was posted two hours ago. It's I have two young children. Sh sure, my life is more difficult. I have I have limited time. I don't always sleep well. Way more responsibilities. But the joy that I get from those children far exceeds any of the negativity, like the the not sleeping or or having to sacrifice time. So you know, oh my goodness, if I could spend twelve hours a day just writing, that'd be great. But that's not my life. I chose to have kids because I think that's really important. And the, those joys are huge. You know, like I was telling you guys before we, we went on air, me getting to like show my kid the things I love and then see him fall in love with things, whether it's music or movies, that's so much joy and I have so much fun doing that. Uh, and you know, I've, like I was saying, friends who don't have kids, they truly don't understand when I say like, oh, I can't do it. Because to them, it's just like, how do you not do it? They have nothing but infinite time, it seems like, other than their cats or their dogs. Um, but I, I don't, I really don't care. I don't miss going out. Mm -hmm. I don't really, I never really was much of a partier and uh, I'm happy to have that structure and, and see the kids and hopefully raise kids who are better than me. Um, but I, I, I have seen it on the faces of people I know that they truly don't get it and, and are disgusted by kids. Um, yeah. And they will die probably lonely. I think that like I could sit here in armchair about it, but I feel like it's people who didn't feel like they were appreciated as children and their parents did not express joy in Maybe, them yeah. and they feel that hate coming up, but it's really a self-hate. Yeah. yeah. And that's really sad, but it doesn't excuse you dehumanizing children wow. and hating parents the way that they so often do. That's a next level projection that you just brought up of like you it's real. deep down hate yourself so much that you don't even want to replicate yourself. Because your parents are supposed to be the first people people that prove to you that you're lovable yeah. and if they didn't you're you're going to see your your child self in other children if you're yes. an adult now and you're going to hate them yep oh yeah i've seen because like, maybe they're getting loved the way that you like wish you could have for been. sure i've seen maybe people... i'm just psychoanalyzing it to death no I, I like i never thought that's I'd psychoanalyze always been my Seth theory Rogen. uh but that is hilarious yeah and i've seen people who've come from families like that yeah. uh with generational stuff that keeps getting passed down and like mm -hmm. they don't have kids or they don't have stable marriages and stuff like that and it's like a pattern of that throughout the family and it's, it's a curse. tough it is a curse mm -hmm. uh, and you can work on it i don't think you could be trapped in that curse you can obviously be have to recognize that you're trapped in that and then get out you know uh but yeah i think he's, he's definitely a narcissist we and got a 20 dollar from bucky ducky i can't imagine okay. not having kids the universe conspired since the beginning of time to put me here. Every generation before me suffered so I could be here. Yet I'm going to say it ends with me. So selfish. Yep. Totally agree. Mm. It's so cliche, but the second I met my son, our first, your heart unfolds in ways you can't even explain. And I also like, it's like you accept death in a whole new way. It's just like, I'm now like him. 
he's mm-hmm. he's gonna take from me, and I can go away, and hopefully I've done a good enough job. I'll give you a, a white pill to con- to to counteract this from Hollywood. There was a, a funny interview that came out with Javier Bardem, who says basically the last two movies he's done, the two big budget movies he did for his kids. He says, "I made Dune for my son. I made The Little Mermaid for my girl. I got paid for both." That's awesome. <laughs> uh, that's you awesome. Know. I like that. Uh, and and I think that's a good thing. And I do want to point out that as much as people talk about Hollywood divorce and things, if you go look at your average network television actor, a lot of them have been married for a long time. Mm-hmm. They've got kids. Some of them, yeah, they've been married several times. Mm-hmm. But like there'll be actors that I've, it's really funny. They'll be like old actors, right? Mm-hmm. And they've been married multiple times, but they've been married for like 20 or 30 years to like each of them. Right. Like, uh, and so... Yeah, it's not all. It's not like this. all. They're not all like this, and okay. I think that a big part of it is that uh, you're right about tone, right? So I give him more leeway because I'm like, look, as long as he's not coming up to me and shouting about it, I don't really care. But when you see the skits uh, online, the about Chelsea Handler videos, that type of stuff, always. that stuff always comes across to me as extremely. Uh, in bad, like bad faith, it's just and very, very like narcissistic and rude, mm-hmm. and I dislike. Well, that. that video of Chelsea Handler on her birthday skiing <laughs> in a bikini with her dogs on her. Um, yeah. Everyone was saying this is so cringe, yeah. but then there were others being like, "Oh, well, if this were a man doing this on his birthday, then you would think it was funny and charming." No. And I'm like, "No, actually, I would." No, if I saw Seth Rogen shirtless <laughs> being <laughs> with his dogs strapped onto his backpack, I would still find it cringe. Just as gross. So you guys basically see it as like doth protest too much. Yeah. For something. Basically, like yeah. Also, did you see that video that recently went viral? Where this chick had her baby and she was in some bar. Yeah. And this, yeah, there, there was this lady that came up to her and was just screaming at her, screaming expletives, like, get your effing kid out of here. Yeah. Like, she doesn't, like, you you don't belong here. Your kid doesn't belong here. Right. Like, she was just being incredibly rude. And what emboldens someone to act that way in person, drunk or not, right. unless they see this message affirmed to them in the media mm-hmm. constantly mm-hmm. that you know, it's acceptable to hate parents and it's acceptable to hate children. Yeah, it is. I remember showing up to the airport once when our son was, yeah, we had, our daughter wasn't born yet. It was just our son. He was just a baby. And people look at you like a leper. Like, mm-hmm. how dare you bring Oh, that yeah, baby Megan Fox said pregnancy is treated like leprosy in this industry. Yeah, uh-huh. like, interesting. I wasn't watched kidding. plenty of TV shows where actresses are on mainstream shows and they, they hide them with, Files and, and cabinets, and they let them work right up until the moment of right. uh, till they till they give. Birth. I think it's different right. for a movie star like my, Megan Fox, though. Yeah, which uh, she would be told. Right. Cobra Commander says counterpoint: maybe not having kids is a vote of no confidence in our world and our society. It could be seen as an empathetic choice to not bring someone else into the world. As usual, there is never just one right answer. I, no, think that I would, would say that's one wrong answer. I disagree of many with that fully. Wrong answers. The world think, is always, we're in a fallen world. The world's always been yeah. bad. And, you know, my grandparents could have thought, thought the same stuff seeing World War II, seeing all the assassinations of the 60s and been like, you know, this world is depraved. I don't want to bring anyone in here. Uh, it's mm-hmm. always bad. And you should always have hope. Kids are literally the hope. And you can raise, you can actually make better future, or at least a, f- a future that can maintain itself, you know. That's uh, not even children. a guarantee, but I just think like, yeah. a human person's pain is more worthy than their non-existence. Totally. Just flat point. out true. Yep. Like, flat out. 100%. Uh, I, I guess you, so you guys see this as doth protest too much. I see it as the culture of narcissism in Hollywood where they're not even thinking about it. I don't think that they think about it deeper than this. I don't think Seth Rogen looks beyond just his immediate wants. And I, his immediate I, I have a hard time believing that he's that surface mm. level as dumb as he is. I think he, he has something else going on. I think it's me. just so ingrained in the culture there that they, that they don't think about it. Now it could come out later that, that it's different. And certainly yeah. if it's the woman who's, it comes out later that wanted kids and, and was basically just going along to get along. That's tragic. And that's heartbreaking, yeah. but it's a choice she made and it's a choice she fell victim to because of social programming. The other thing I think is always funny with these types of people is they're, they're also activists and you know, Chelsea and him are very politically active and they want to pass lots of laws and they're childless. So like it's very selfish, you know, the way they see politics. Uh, it's, it's about them. Well, yeah, I guess Seth Rogen does have really bad TDS. 
He's terrible. And just derangement. Terrible. In just general. all around derangement, which is terrible. I, I think he's actually, he was a really good writer and he was a, a great comedic writer. There were some things I really enjoyed with him. Didn't he like threaten to go to Gina Carano's house? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Didn't that happen? <laughs> I wouldn't even Am I making put it past that up? Him. I'm going to have to but look that up. I, I loved Freaks and Geeks, right? He was in Freaks oh, and Geeks. Ge yeah, that um, was good. I loved that show. Not that he wrote it, but it's great. So you don't think it's possible that some people just don't want to have kids? Oh, I think it is possible. Of course for it's sure. possible, yeah. For sure. Uh, I do think that's possible, and I know them. Uh, there's many, there's a few, not many, there's a few in my family, uh, and I wish they thought differently, but it's totally possible. This just seems different. Okay. Uh, this Because the way he keeps going in on it. I would say the majority of people out in modern society right now who would report that they do not want kids and they do not plan on having any, have not done a thorough examination or really any self-examination as to why that is. Mm. And if they did, they would probably find they have some internal issues to work out, mm -hmm. like from their own upbringing, or maybe they, you know, maybe they are narcissistic. Maybe they have yeah. selfish desires that they're not willing to make so sacrifices to their own convenience. There are a lot of factors at play. and they're not encouraged to ask themselves those hard questions. I think a lot of societies also made it sound like you have to be like, it has to be the right time to have kids. Um, and when I thought that the too. Right time? There is no, when we had our son, we had $200 between us and our bank account and we're squatting in an apartment in Brooklyn and mostly living out of a car. Uh, obviously was not the right time to bring a child in the world but it was great and that child made me way better work harder uh focus more um and and he changed me thoroughly uh and and, and my wife so you know but that's me and i'm not saying that's everyone because a lot of people really and don't do well i just want to point out like look the the to cobra commander's message right there is a large there's a growing movement of nihilism around that idea, right? That yeah. the world you're, that the world is just too broken and that there is no reason to bring children into this world for mm -hmm. that. I hear it all the time. That purpose. That's a very common thing to hear nowadays. Mm -hmm. So it, reject whether nihilism. you address, reject the idea or not, it's good to examine why has the culture grown so grown so willing to embrace such nihilism. Well, I think that's a product of, of Marxism. I don't want to bore everyone, but I think like we have been infiltrated by a death cult that wants you to not survive or be happy. Uh, and then, and then, like, look at the direct consequence of this is something like made program in Canada where you just sign up yeah. and, they, and they'll take your life or, or yep. 3D printed suicide pods. You know, it's all kind of connected because, like you said, it nihilism, you know, meaninglessness, no purpose. And it's really sad as cash flies at me. <laughs> I love it. And I, I just see it as like when, when people have those responses, I think of that as more, I feel more sad for them, right? Like that their world has been, mm -hmm. that their worldview has been dis destroyed in such a thorough manner. Now they would say it's, it's realism. And I'm probably more, I, I'm, I straddle the line between mm -hmm. pragmatic and idealism right. very often, right? Like I'm very, very willing to be like, look, if that's how it happens, that's how it happens. But I'm always going to have a hope for the future. Right. And kind of one of the interesting things about life is finding a good balance between the two. Mm -hmm. Pragmatism is good because then you never find yourself, you know, infuriated when the world doesn't work the way you want it to. Mm -hmm. Idealism is good because it allows hope for the future, yeah. which allows you to live a more, in my opinion, uh, a more fulfilled life. Mm -hmm. And I think finding a balance there is good. But for a lot of people, I don't blame them for embracing that worldview. If they haven't found a way like to what you were saying about self-examination, that's a very important part of that. And those are hard questions to ask yourself. And if you can't get over the fact that the world just seems bleak, it's not hard to believe that people see the world that way. I've been there. I know it. I've been nihilist. I've been depressed. I know, I know the feeling, uh, but the world is beautiful and it's also, you know, and I'm putting some quotes, always ending. You know, if you listen to all the news and all the pundits and, and telling you everything's the most important election ever, this is the end of democracy. All the, everyone's because the, the people who are nihilist all, also sound like the people who believe the climate is going to destroy their earth in 10 years now or whatever. And they don't want to have kids. That's been a lie. It's been going on for decades. So have kids, find joy, then you die and your kids live on and everything's beautiful. All right. Let's go Super Chats. All right. Mikey, uh, or sorry, Shane H. Wilder said, at worst, Jake loses an ear. <laughs> Mike Tyson. Oh, I don't know. There could yes. be some that's permanent an, brain damage. That's an Evander Holyfield. That reference. might be worse. Yes. Uh, Corey Anderson said Mike Tyson once told one of his opponents he was going to eat his children. Yeah. Classic Mike. 
please go look ha, up ha. the best things he's ever One said. One of my favorite memes of all time is still this meme with a bunch of coke on his nose, and it says Mike Tyson after eating a powdered donut at a house party circa 1982. <laughs> yes. Isn't there a clip of him saying like his back is broken, but he fought anyway? <laughs> my back is broke. <laughs> it's uh, clearly standing. Twenty dollars super chat here from Bender the Offender it says I think Tucker Carlson said on an interview with Lex Friedman that men won't do something until they're forced to, and that goes with kids as well. Could be wrong about that quote. I was one of the things I was going to address, and I just didn't think it was the time or place in this whole discussion. Was like, look, what has um, you know medication, uh, birth control, and and contraceptives done? Because like he's saying, a lot of times you don't realize how much. From what I've read, because mm-hmm. I don't have kids, mm-hmm. hope to one day. Um, they don't realize how much you love that child until they're actually born, right? They weren't ready until they were ready. And with all of the methods in place to help prevent that from happening, people just aren't finding themselves thrust into the situation where it needs to happen. It's different for everybody. Cause I know also know people who've had kids and then like, like guys in particular and just ran away, like l- literally, yeah. the you know, flip, it, the yeah. switch gets flipped in their brain. Yeah. It's for me, like I, whatever, for whatever reason, the second I heard my son's heartbeat, however many weeks into the pregnancy that was, uh, that was my flip, my switch flip. And I was like, oh my, I remember like just losing uh, vision. It was crazy. And I was in love with that movie. Woo! We just talked about Bradley Thank Cooper you. who said he took eight months before he connected to his child at all. I saw that. And, uh, you know. Was that he, out of context? Or did he really mean that? He said some other stuff that made it weird. <laughs> the initial what statement, the it wasn't that out there. Like okay. other fathers have said similar things. But weird. I still think that's I weird. I was more weirded out by him saying that he showers, that he's naked all the time because he was yeah. he would shower with his dad. That to me. That's I want weird some too. Biden I want, stuff. This, I want yeah. a segment for the show called Please Take Away the Celebrity Microphones. <laughs> like who's letting these people give these interviews? Uh, Nate said $20. Shane, I would argue it was the right time for you to have your child it remade you in a sense and look at what you've you have now you're not just a father you're a hero oh thank you so much and you're right it was in the grander cosmic sense it was the perfect time it was great Mm -hmm. not that john stewart said i forgot jada was in scream 2 yeah, she's, uh, so yes, she's um, heck of a reference. She's literally the first character to die. <laughs> okay, uh, her and Will well, just watches Actually, that no. on repeat every time he's mad at her. That, that's what I was saying. I was like, I imagine like every time she yells at him, he goes, puts it on. She's his, got on, scream on, fantasies. He, even worse is like he's like he's too afraid to put it on the TV, so he watches it on his phone. Oh. He watches it on the Apple Vision Pro. Yeah. Um, she thinks he's like, watching porn, but it's really it's, just him. So or, the, the scream murdering. She's uh she's on a date with Omar <laughs> Epps, the character played by Omar Epps, and he dies in a bath room stall and she dies in a theater full of people wearing screen masks. Cobra Commander sent $20. Another problem with saying having kids is the path to happiness is it kind of breaks one off in the people who can't find someone and those who are now too old to bear children. Mm. Charity is a virtue, a eh? maybe practice it. Well, I don't think anyone here said that having kids is the path to happiness. It's definitely not. I no, it's not a struggle. It's a, it's a lot of difficulties and uh, it's very difficult. But overall, it has been much joy. But it's like I said, not everyone reacts the same way. I think you have to choose it, right? Like you have to choose to do this the right way and be willing to make sacrifices. Yeah, 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 yeah. You have to make sacrifices. Obviously, you're going to be incredibly miserable if you go into being a parent with the wrong disposition. Yeah, I've talked to people who live a certain lifestyle, and then they ask me about parenthood, and then stretching that specific lifestyle into parenthood lifestyle, I'm like, well, you just can't. Like right. in ter- when it comes to like partying or, you know, certain types of substances, let's say <laughs> like, yeah. like I, I'll drink every now and then, but it's rare and I haven't done drugs in a very long time and I don't plan on doing drugs ever again. And not since I was a kid, you know, not even since I was like dating my wife, uh, it's a girlfriend at the time, but there's some people who think they can still do those things and you have to be willing to be like, I don't need those in my life. Yeah. Uh, you have another $20 from DC and C had a shitty upbringing. It always wanted kids, something about writing the wrongs. Absent fathers, but especially shitty present fathers, indoctrinate kids to the left. Men equals bad. It's an easy sell in that environment. To me, definitely. It's like no. when I think about this stuff now, mine is more like it's about fearful. I am scared of the world, but not in the sense that I think the end of the world is coming. It's that 
to have a child now means you're going to be fighting unbelievably dark forces to prevent them from falling into certain beliefs and ideologies that are rampant in all aspects sure. of society always, now. But dangerous. you also can't like flatter yourself that you even have that amount of control over your kid, right? Like well, you can't do everything. You can't protect them. Mm -hmm. from everything risk is unfortunately a part of it and there's lots of fear you know i have to learn sometimes let my youngest our daughter who is basically feral <laughs> get into trouble you know like like she'll do things i'm like you're going to get hurt uh and as much as i want to save her and it's not, if it's really bad you know obviously i'll, I'll stop her but sometimes like she's just got to you know do the thing and learn a lesson yeah uh and that's part of it. And that's going to, that little thing then evolves into all the crazier things as she gets older when, you know, in school or, or whatnot. Just every kid, like now, every day you come home as a parent, you check your kid's hair color to make sure they haven't dyed it some weird color. And you go, <laughs> <laughs> thank goodness. That's how you know they're, yeah. they're doing okay. Yeah. Puggy Ducky said, you can call it cringe, but he's making real money. Was oh, this about? Pancake guy. Jake Paul or Pan the pancakes. cringe of the day guy? <laughs> okay. Well, I mean, yeah, I can't hate yeah. on that. Shout out to fake pancakes. Yeah. Uh, in the, I just want to address in the chat, Crazy Cat says, this is a pop culture show, right? Well, Seth Rogen is somebody that is famous and yeah. famous people have influence yep. over your children. Yep. It is referenceable. It's it's yeah. easy to find a, a path here. Like I just said, you worry about your kid coming home, suddenly seeing the world in a completely ridiculous way. That you yeah. See, them. this is a pop culture Thank show. You. We got songs. Music. We got How music. Yeah. Please right. forgive my dissertation on the joys of child of parenthood. Okay. <laughs> We loved your dissertation. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Somebody uh, in the in the chat uh, says it's pop as in dads. Pop, pop's <laughs> yes. culture. Nice. Yes. There you go. <laughs> Papa culture crisis. Shane H. Wilder said the Bobbies are banging at the book Baroness's abode, bringing up belligerent blasphemies of brash BS bigotry bollocks. Whoa. Alliteration. All right, Doctor Seuss. Always a little fun. <laughs> nice. Okay. Mikey said, "What's this man talking about?" LOL. <laughs> I don't know. Who knows? I don't know. I don't know who it could this be man me. Is. It could be me. It could be Mike Tyson. Valiant Renegade said this is mainly a dysfunction of UK law. There's no freedom of speech. We're watching in we're watching in real time that causing hurt feelings are guiding towards becoming a punishable offense under the law. Now say it in an Australian accent. Or just say oh no. Uh, R N R. The Lar. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Yes. Uh, Valiant no Renegade added to that. He said, a cult of free speech. Are you serious? Free speech is weaponized. Move to China or Iran, pumpkin. Mm. And then he also said only one or two detransitioned because the rest just have high suicide rates. And there are there there are far more than that. Oh, yeah. That number. Yeah, obviously. But the thing is, is to them, mainstream media is God, right? And mm -hmm. they wouldn't have looked past what the mainstream for media sure. is telling you. And the most frustrating thing in the world is when you want to go look for something and you know you're looking for a fact or a piece of information or a story that the media is going to want to black out and not talk about. Right. And yeah. then you got to go to page 962 of Google. Yeah. The internet is not usable now. Yeah. Like you can yeah. use Brave, you can use DuckDuckGo, and even DuckDuckGo is is dicey at times yep. I just use an old encyclopedia I have a paperback I still say that the most powerful tool the, wep the, the most powerful weapon the media has is the choice to not talk about something <laughs> mm -hmm. that's really hard Brett Corey Anderson said that India dude has blocked me on Twix no that's a that's a medal of honor <laughs> yeah Shane H. Wilder said he doesn't believe in free speech you don't say shocking Pat the Plumber said, Abe Simpson knew clouds were fake in 2002. That's right. I share that meme all the time. Wait, what man, is Old it? man yelling at clouds. It's <laughs> from The Simpsons. They Classic. predicted everything. Yeah, they did. Carnell said, I know we're about 100 episodes away, but what can we accept from P or expect from PCC episode 666? Ooh. And can I request Shane be on for that show? <laughs> no calling in sick, Mary. <laughs> I didn't even I was gonna consider say, are you gonna be here? <laughs> Mary I, I won't didn't be even here. consider that episode six 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 was like actually close. Wow. We can just lie and call it six six seven. Like like a, like we can a, there's just lie. there's certain uh, buildings that will skip a thirteenth floor. Yes, very, you know, very so you could just do that. Yep. Yeah. Um, we can do that. We can do that. We can just skip it. Mary's I, really considering. I it. don't want to. Or we could. <laughs> what we could do is, we, what day is opposite day? We could make it nine 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 that day. <laughs> that and sounds then, like Hitler. Yeah, that's. Uh, we can do that. Uh, yeah, it sounds like Hitler. 
perfect. Nine. Yeah, we, Satan or Hitler, which one? Um, <laughs> Take your pick. <laughs> we would need like some some special guests that like really fit for the vibe. <laughs> she's like she. And if she's, only we could get Marilyn Manson for. I have that to think oh. About, oh, we'll get like an exorcist. <laughs> I was gonna say Marilyn's gonna get a priest. <laughs> yeah, first priest that on the show. That would be awesome. Well then, you I, guys will need to behave in the chat. Yeah. <laughs> if I say that, I know you won't. But. Yeah. You're just done. putting that Maybe out if there. If you want, you can take the day off, and I will. I will do that show uh, alone. <laughs> so I'm gonna have six, to six, check. Six. Like, I math is tough, but I'll have to check what day of the week that'll be. Depends on if we end up missing any days. What are you on now? What number is it now? Five sixty-four. Oh, wow. so it's a little okay. Over We're a ways off, yeah, but it's some. it'll come cl closer, and we won't know what to do. Um, I'm I'm already thinking about episode 600. Like, what are we gonna do? I'm not dyeing my hair blonde again. I know that. <laughs> now oh. I have to worry about what's gonna it's gonna damage my poor hair, which has made it so graciously to my age. I, I, I can't uh, I can't risk losing it. I do get like a single gray hair every couple of months if it's a really oh, yeah. stressful time period. Oh yeah. Pluck that Just wait till you have kids. I I'm, you I'm losing it. losing my hair and going gray. Like I, when I grow out the beard, yeah. uh, every now and then I'm like, oh my goodness, it's it's a lot so, of gray. Yeah. I don't get it in the hair. I get yeah. it in the in the beard. Yeah. Places. I like it. It's so, good. You know, it's good. Salt and pepper. I heard chicks dig salt and pepper. Yeah. Yeah. Aging George like Clooney, fine right? wine. <laughs> Aging like a sheets taco that has tons of preservatives in it. Yes. It's gonna last forever. <laughs> Gordon Shumway said, "Why don't they do a rom-com about the Cyrus drama? Kind of like a Hallmark version of a corn hub genre." They could do that. Ugh. But uh, are you aware of this? I have no idea what this is. Yeah. Well. Miley Cyrus's mother mm -hmm. started dating and then married Noah Cyrus's ex situationship. What? Like friends with benefits oh, guy. That's bizarre. Yeah. That's really bizarre. weird. That's bizarre. Then I guess she was she was barred from entering the wedding with like armed security. <laughs> it's insane. Wow. Serenco Production said, Yeah, I wonder why Anne Hathaway is doing a movie where she can make out with a hot younger dude multiple <laughs> times guilt free because it's acting. <laughs> she could do that anytime yeah. she wanted. Yeah, okay? that's true. Uh, also, I do want to point out that. But if her husband knows about it, she doesn't <laughs> have any consequences. Yeah. Is she married? Yes. She married yeah, her. I think yeah. that it mentioned. Okay. I had ice cream with her husband. Okay. Nice guy. Oh, yeah. Okay. So I, I brought an article to Mary's attention the other day. Maybe we could even talk about it tomorrow. That. Actor Brian Austin Green mentioned, we should talk about this. mentioned yeah. that he, he was in the Power Rangers. Mm -hmm. uh, or no. Was it Brian Austin? No. Uh, it was, so this dude was in Melrose Place. Okay. And he was dating Tiffany Amber Thiessen at the time. Mm -hmm. And he, or was it 902? No, it was one of the two. Mm -hmm. And he would get jealous of her doing sex scenes with other characters, with other people on the show. Right. What they ta say all the time, oh, it's separation. You know, it's you have to learn to compartmentalize. No way. Well, apparently that works for some actors, but not for others. Oh, okay. So I'm looking about like the information on song one. So yeah. That's Adam cool. Shulman is his name, yeah. and it says not long after they got married, Adam collaborated with Anne to produce 2014's Song One, an indie drama film in which Anne also starred. That's right. Interesting. Yeah. I wonder if I'm listed. Doubt yeah, it. I doubt definitely. It. I doubt, highly doubt it. I'm in the scene definitely. with like playing music. Yeah, it's weird. <laughs> Shane weird. H. Wilder said, to be honest, do we really want more Seth Rogans in the world with that <laughs> horrible laugh? How can the narcissism be so high for a mediocre actor? Is yeah. he a mediocre actor? We also, we also, he's, he's, he's got one note. The other thing yeah. we didn't point out, like a lot of the issue that people took with that, which he, we didn't even get into, was the weed part of it. Uh, like, what if people were like, he's filling his day, solving math proofs, and and mm -hmm. and ending global warming? Like, you know, is it the is it what he chooses to do with his time that makes That's it a problem? That's also part of what makes it so. Uh, I mean, I think I think smoking weed is ridiculous. Uh, and I, but if you want to, that's fine. But I'm just uh, what I'm saying is that like you know he, it's his cho people were complaining about his choice of activity again, not something that bothers me personally. No, mine, but I get where people what people are saying. Mine is just his flippant attitude and disregard for the whole thing of parenthood. It was Brian Austin Green. It was Beverly Hills 90210, yeah. not yeah. Melrose Place. Right. At first, you said Power Rangers. Uh, Power that Rangers? was that was a different oh, okay. person. I was like, oh, I okay. like Power Rangers 90210 fusing. That's an interesting That's, show. That would be a good one. Yeah, <laughs> that would be weird. Uh, that was she... Austin Saint uh, Saint John. Yeah. S oh, okay. Yes, yes, yes. Same thing. Yeah. <laughs> They're basically same the thing. same person. <laughs> Close enough. Shane H. Wilder said, "To be honest, do we really want?" Oh, I already read that one. Um, Pat the Plumber said, 
points at Cloud, that MFR is not real. Yes. Yep. They're not. Thank Shaney you. Twilder said, I don't think Seth could have kids if he wanted to. <laughs> Oh really? Maybe he's all the, all where the do you get that idea? Floaters just start, you know, the swimmers just start swimming, swimming for him. Yeah. I guess not. Yeah. yeah. Bucky Ducky <laughs> said, "I'd r much rather be a broke American than a wild rabbit." People have no idea how good we have it as humans. There are issues, but it's not that bad. I mean, yes that's... and no. We have journalists going to jail for reporting on the news. We have so many problems, but it's still the best. Things are getting lives. worse, but yeah. it's, it's, we're still the best country on earth. Yes. <laughs> Love that. There's an American flag Proud waving behind Mary. Proud to be Mary. an American. <laughs> <laughs> Corey Anderson said, my kid just turned 16 and is the biggest a-hole, but I love him and <laughs> would change a thing. I hope that was a typo. Maybe you would change a thing or two. Okay. <laughs> Make him not an asshole. Yeah. <laughs> High Vulture 75 said, I don't do interviews with women unless I fornicate with them. So you better stop talking unless you want to, you know, Tyson to a female reporter. <laughs> is that serious oh, or no? Oh, I think that is serious. He even used the word fornicate. I, I feel like that's fornicate. real. Fornicate. It's bizarre. For, with his lisp. <laughs> fornicate. Unless you want to. I don't do interviews with women. <laughs> not Let that John Stewart he probably like became so jacked because he's overcompensating for the lisp not that John yeah, Stewart you don't wanna, like, imagine like you're like nice lisp and then you just wake yeah. up in a hospital he, yeah. he said I normally yeah. don't do anything with women unless I fornicate with them first <laughs> oh my goodness yeah. psychotic we talked about his uh, his rape conviction yeah. on an earlier episode it really got some people mad yeah. some fans and 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 uh, abuse uh -huh. I think he hit Robin Givens. I don't know the details. I think that was his wife at the time. That was a long time ago. Who went on to do Forgive and Forget, yep. a, ta a daytime talk show. Robin Givens. Are we forgive and forget from... Mike Tyson yeah. every day? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not that John Stewart said, Dear Seth, if you had kids in your 20s, they're moving out by your mid 40s. Yeah, he, would, uh, he could have then gone on to do the vapid things he wanted to do That's after right. the fact. Right. While still feeling like he fulfilled his yep. duty to society. Yep. Sure. Yep. Uh, Jake Martin said, this has been a top-notch stream today, panel, chat, Thank you. salute. Thank you. Also, it is fair to point out that he did say that like he was able to become famous because he didn't have kids because he was able to focus on his work. That's ridiculous. That entirely Killian Murphy true. has like six kids. He does? He's That's got a very ton of Irish kids. of him. It is. It is. Wow. He's got a big family. Like I like that. You know, you don't have to not have kids to then also be successful. Mm -hmm. I think they yeah, can I mean, be more if, successful. Especially if you're mega rich, like either one of right, them. Right. And you have all the resources I wonder in the world. when Killian started having kids, if he started having kids. I mean, he's been an actor for so long, right? I don't know. He's always story. looked the same age, so I have no <laughs> yeah. idea. Yeah, he <laughs> is um, oddly immortal. Yeah. Bucky Ducky said, if Brett won't dye his hair, marry you should. Not mm, gonna happen. Interesting. That's even more interesting. not gonna happen. <laughs> you should dye it black on episode 666. <laughs> no, no, not gonna happen. Shane H. Wilder said, Hey, Mary, you know that if you bring an exorcist, that I'll behave. Also, on 666, I'll just super chat the St. Benedict exorcism prayer for you, Mary. Okay. Well, we'll be fine. Like, I'm not scared of a number. That show sounds awesome. There's a new trailer fine. I watched last night, uh, Late Night with the Devil, I think it's called, about a late night host who brings in an exorcist uh, and, the, and a lady who's possessed by the devil. Interesting looking film. Sounds like um, maybe we should do a review. Yeah. yeah. On 666. Yeah. Maybe it lines up. <laughs> oh, um, Corey Anderson also retracted his original statement. He said it was a typo. He okay. wouldn't <laughs> change a thing. We know. <laughs> Or was it a typo? I don't know. Uh, Freudian slip. Freudian slip, right. All right, guys, before we go, would you please have children and then hit the like button on this video? Oh. <laughs> wow. <laughs> hey, you know, just push the Fornicate, button. Brett says. Yes, that's, Fornicate. That's exactly what I'm saying. Guys, hit the like button on this video and subscribe to this channel if you have not done so already. Please and thank you. Shane, thank you. This is always a pleasure. Let love, everyone know where they can here. find you. You can find me at Shane Cashman everywhere online. And uh, I got a bunch of books on, on Amazon. Check them out. And uh, oh, I should say, uh, I'll be 
presenting an award at the Grifties on what? Saturday. Yeah, the Hotep Jesus and crew, the Hotep Nation. I'm gonna need a lot more explanation. Uh, on they, have the show, they have an award show. They have an award show. The Hoteps and my favorite people are are putting it on. Where um, is this? In, like in New Jersey. What? <laughs> yep, it'll be live streamed. There's a live audience. Uh, Sam Tripoli will be there. Alex Stein, bunch of of maniacs. So I'm looking forward to that, and okay. I'll be giving out an award. So it'll be live streamed. So check it out. I have ended the poll, ladies and gentlemen. I'm sad, sad to say, Shane, but they don't agree with you. 74% oh. say clo clouds are, in fact, real. Wow. We have a lot of work to do. Find me online. Get I'll hit it. you up individually. And I'll <laughs> we have I will explain it to you if I have to. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mary, where can they find you? Uh, you can send me validation on Instagram at Mary Archived, or you can send me hate on X that is also Mary Archived. You have a couple more super chats. Hi, Vulture 75 said, I found out there's a sheets within driving distance. What do you recommend I try <laughs> oh. if I go? Chickens, the chicken strips are good. Chicken strips are really good. Well, you like the tacos. I like the tacos. Not the tacos. The they do good sandwiches. The breakfast sandwiches are great. I actually think their coffee is legitimately good. I will also suggest the mac and cheese bites. I will Ooh, also no, suggest yeah. no, those. no, just the mac and cheese, not the mac and cheese bites. What are you doing? And You're the ruining curly this. fries are the curly fries. Those are really look good. good I haven't well. had them. Yeah. No. They, they do look good. Brett's wrong. She's wrong. <laughs> she's also, as usual, she's wrong. The boom boom sauce is the best sauce. Can can we figure out a way to do a live PCC from a sheets? <laughs> that is not legal. <laughs> if, if I find a way, illegal. if I find a way to make it happen, if I want to do that show. I want to do that show, and and also I'm going to make it happen. Yep. All right. Well, I mean, sheets, sheets, reach out. Sheets, here I come. Yeah. <laughs> um, also, DCNC said, clouds are real, Shane. Suck it, you stoner. <laughs> <laughs> That's amazing. I will I will change your mind. Hit me up. <laughs> um, Bucky Ducky said, poll is 74% and 25%. Who is the 1%? This happens all the time. Who is they? Um, who is they? The, this happens all the time. The, the people who run the cloud factory. That's yes. big cloud people. You think you know Big Pharma? There's also Big Cloud. <laughs> 200 Watt Studios said, just got here. Not going to lie. I thought Shane Davis was here. Disappointed. Well, Shane <laughs> Sorry, Davis guys. will be here soon. Yes. Yeah. Not going to say when, just in case. Uh, does Shane but. Davis believe in clouds? That's well, ask him. <laughs> yeah, yeah, please ask him. Shane I need H. all the Shanes Wilder. on the page. <laughs> Did anyone ever see Repossessed with Leslie Nielsen and Linda Blair? It's a satire of The Exorcist that is actually funny. No, I no. haven't seen that. Have you? Should have, no, Sounds no. Funny. We should have, somebody should have one where a guy, like a demon that possesses people owns like a repo business so he repos cars while possessing people <laughs> that's awesome <laughs> that's that should be Dude, a thing right that's also cobra commander said sheets the steak breakfast burrito made to order i've had bad experiences with the breakfast burrito some of them they just make hmm. them like super small and they totally oh rip that's you not off. good that's not good uh this is an important question do you use the drive through at sheets oh no <laughs> i've Brett? never used the okay good there. it's yeah. very i would have thought less it's weird it's weird it's, it's weird because there's not actually a person but you kind of have to get out of the car because the this touch right. screen is like too far away right. from the window. My favorite, thing, my favorite meme lately it's this it's this meme of of Dominic Toretto from the Fast and Furious reaching out for someone's arm, and then the next picture is just like when you're trying to grab the ticket at a toll booth. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. That, that's exactly that's what awesome. it's like. You're just like no, no I had to do that when I had the super long acrylic nails and I wasn't able to grab it. Yeah, yeah. I, I think gas stations with drive-throughs are weird. I that, mean, that's the only one, isn't it? Uh, no, I know a few others in West Virginia. That's odd. Yeah, it's a whole culture. All right, Mary, where can they find you? I already told I did it. Okay, we got distracted by a bunch yes. of people. <laughs> All right, guys, go ahead and follow me, Instagram and Twix, at Brett Dasovic on both. Did we get that last one from Bucky Ducky? No, isn't yeah. Big Cloud just Google and Amazon Web? That's good. That's digital cloud for sure. But we're talking about physical cloud as well uh, up in the sky that they've mutilated. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> got Thanks it. For listening. At Brett Dasovic on Instagram and Twix. If you want to follow the show, we are here five days a week, Monday through Friday, 3 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. That is noon Pacific. We are on Amazon Music, Apple Podcasts, Pandora, and Spotify if you prefer to listen rather than watch. If you want to follow the show on social media, we are on Twix at popculture underscore show, Facebook and not TikTok at Pop Culture Crisis, and on Instagram, at Pop Culture Crisis Pod. Mary, there's one more there. Bucky Ducky said, if Wonder Woman and Spider-Man made a company together, would they call it Amazon Web Service? Ooh, I'll be here all night. Nice. Great. That was good. And Bezos sounds like a villain name, to be completely honest. For sure. It does. So. For sure. Guys, we'll be back with another episode tomorrow. We'll see you then. Bye. Bye. Later.